They've been camped on the hillsides all weekend. They've been coming in since late this morning. Now they're all in the grandstands. The huge crowd ready to see the Irwin Tools night race at Bristol. The cars will be rolling off the pit lane onto the world's fastest half mile very shortly. Kansas Clint Boyer is second in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series championship standings. And the strength Clint has shown on the short tracks, the tracks measuring less than a mile this year, has been phenomenal. A fifth here in March and a couple of seconds in the three races that have been run. And Clint tonight is our ESPN in-race reporter starting back in 24th. Hey, Clint Boyer, Dale Jarrett, the ESPN. You there, my friend? Hey, guy, buddy. All right, man. Clint, hey, I worked hours trying to come up with something that could put you in a really good mood before you get ready to tackle this place. This is what I got. Since joining MWR, you have scored more points on short tracks than any other driver. That means we should keep an eye on you tonight? Man, I hope so. It's going to be a long road to hoe. Uh, extremely proud of everybody in MWR, Brian Patty, everybody on this 5 Iron G Toyota. It's a fun group, man. We, uh, we work hard. We have a lot of fun. Certainly, uh, it's cool to be at Bristol, another short track where we know we run well at. Um, wild night, so exciting to be here. Man, it's one of them racetracks you just wish every race car driver in the country has an opportunity to race in front of a crowd like this because there's not a feeling like it. Yeah, I understand that, man. Hey, uh, our mailbag question comes from Donald in Gray, Maine. He says, with no wins, three races before the chase, being solidly in second place, are you willing to take chances you wouldn't normally take to win a race and get the extra bonus point? Oh, we're willing to lay it all out there. It's time to, to go for broke. Uh, you know, I feel like we're in the chase. Um, the consistency's been there all year long. It's time to try to get some races won here, get some bonus points. But it's, uh, like I said, it's a long night. A lot can happen. Just got to buckle down here and get the job done. All right, man, thanks for talking. You have a good night. We'll look forward to talking to you later on now. Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Brian Patty. Oh, boy. <laughs> hey, Brian, Andy Petrie up here. You got us? I got you. Hey, Brian, you've engineered some, let's call them, creative wins in the past for, for you and your team. What can you do tonight that could help you, you know, quit, roll the dice and maybe get one of those wins to take some bonus points into the chase? Uh, I mean, in practice, we had a pretty good car. Uh, it showed some good speed, especially it didn't, uh, didn't seem like it slowed down too much in the long run. So uh, I watched the bush race last night from my hotel room, and I got some ideas to get going. But, uh, you know, Clint runs really good here. And, and we've had pretty good setups here in the past, so I just hope uh, if the bottom comes in, it would be, it'd be good for us. But uh, if it doesn't, I'll have to do some strategy. <laughs> All right, man. You're not giving away secrets still, are you? <laughs> good luck tonight. Thanks for talking to us, buddy. Thank you. Brian Patty, Clint Boyer's crew chief, all set up and ready to go. High-definition onboard cameras tonight riding aboard Danica Patrick's car. She's got our GoDaddy on board. Be too hard for you to cross there at high speed and get on pit road. I copy. It's 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 tough. You got to get rolled up, and we need to make sure there's time to get clear low. Clint Boyer carrying our five-hour energy camera tonight. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. with the Nationwide Insurance on board, and Kevin Harvick has the Jimmy John's gourmet sandwiches on board. Get a good look at this sign. It's a rookie sign, man. I don't know how good he's doing, Kevin. Stand for on the night, boys. <laughs> Gil Martin talking to uh, Kevin Harvick, Gil, uh, Kevin's crew chief. Jeff Burton's got the cat on board. Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Juan Pablo Montoya has the Kellogg's on board. I was giving you time for that. Uh -huh. Martin Truex with the Napa on board. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. has the Dyer Martin Dew camera. Mark Hollywood Armstrong, change in front tires for David Rudeman's got our over-the-wall camera tonight. We talked about the drivers having to manage their emotions. Hollywood, how about you? The emotions down here, they're high already. This is Bristol, baby. And take those emotions with you over the wall, you can get yourself in trouble. But hold those emotions till the end of the night, and you could get yourself in more trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about that helmet? Did you see those lights he had on there? Yeah. True words, very true words. So Mark Martin driving for Tony Stewart tonight in the 14 car, but communication from the boss already. Good luck tonight. Get after your driver. Spotter do a good job babysitting, and uh, Addington, you and the, the guys in the pits do a good job tonight. Watch them. Thanks, boss. We appreciate you, buddy. Yes, sir. Thank you, boss, man. Tony Stewart hooked up with his race teams. Pretty cool. Our broadcast available tonight in Spanish by activating your SAP button presented by ESPN Deportes. And we are coming to the one to go signal and we'll go racing in another lap here at Bristol. So where you see the light and the dark racetrack, that's been the critical spots here all weekend up in those corners. 
the darker racetrack is grip, the lighter racetrack is trouble. Fine line there, and drivers tell me that if you hit it perfect and can get right to the edge of that, there's a lot of speed to be had. If you cross over it, you're in trouble. Here's the other thing. It's going to be sneaking its way up just a quarter of an inch at a time until it gets all the way, I mean, basically touching the wall before the end of the night. So it's going to be interesting to watch the progression of that group. Double-digit caution flags the last two races since that track grinding was done here at Bristol. Expect a lot of trouble tonight. Yeah, you know, when this track, before the, all the changes, you ran around the bottom single file, you could never venture to the outside. This offers better racing because it's up against the tops where they're going to run, but you have the option to go to the middle and bottom and try to make that pass. So 500 laps around a little half-mile track, 43 cars, all in search of the same goal, to take home the trophy from the Irwin Tools night race at Bristol. Watch the flashbulbs go as the green flag waves. Gonna try that bottom lane on Denny Hamlin, the pole sitter who chose the outside lane for the start. Yeah, Kirk Bush in that battle to get keep himself in the top ten and be in the chase spot. A bonus point for leading a lap would be huge to him. 87 car Joe Nemechek smoking on the opening lap. Uh oh, got it. one out of the groove up on the front straightaway. Looks like the 51 car got out of the groove in three and four. We stay green. He stayed off the wall, mostly. Ryan Truex in his Sprint Cup team. Carter's gone. Carl Edwards, 99. Joey Logano, 22. Matt Kenseth, 20. Racing for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Yeah, Kenseth started on the inside. He's been trying to find a way to get in or get in front of this group. Finally has to settle in behind Edwards. And Ryan Newman there in the 39 car. That opportunity to use that bottom and make a pass is going to be there if you have room to slide up there. It's going to be even more prevalent, though, as they get 50, 60 laps on these tires. Handling starts to go away on some others. Then you can make some time. Yeah, I've been watching the car. It looks like the 88 car junior is able to really work the bottom early. He's passed a few cars. He's made his way up. He's trying to get by the 43 of Eric Amarola right now. Started 19th, trying to take 10th spot away. Now, what you have to make sure there in doing that is that you don't use up the right front tire too much. To run down there and run fast, you've got to use some brake. You're going to have to put more wheel in it, and therefore it's going to use up that right front tire a little bit more. Don't want to blow that out create a problem for you. And that sound is the perfect illustration of the whole problem these drivers face trying to run the bottom. In order to make that pass, you've got to be in the gas, wide open, coming up off the corner. But if the car's not going to stick and you need all the racetrack and there's somebody outside, better give them some room. Yeah, that's the problem. You can see through the middle of the corner, you can make good time. Brad Keselowski, they able to get about a car length on Jimmy Johnson. But as you come up off the corner, you got to have all that room to make the speed as you exit. And a change that was made from the last race to here to this race was the uh, gear rule to where they don't turn as many RPMs with this year. It's called a higher gear, so they're not turning many RPMs. They don't have that jump off the corner that they had, so it makes it more difficult. Well, the way I look at it, though, it's the same for everybody. It okay. is the same. Er everybody's got the same gear. Yes, but it makes it more difficult than what they were used to in the spring. Makes that bottom group a little more challenging. Truex picking up eighth spot on Kane, 56 past five. Starting last in the 18 car, Kyle Busch. Working your way through the traffic is going to be tough. This is what we talked about with Ryan Truex in that 51. Three wide racing at Bristol. Yep. So Kyle trying to make some progress. 
part of the problem for Kyle in the 18, not only is he feeling out this car for the first few laps since it's been repaired, but by starting at the end, the leaders are going to be closing on him quickly as he tries to work his way through traffic. He's got to be able to pass him fast enough to keep him getting lapped. Yeah, when that green flag comes out, as soon as they string out single file, you're basically a half a lap or more down within the first few laps. So it's, a, it's really going to be a fight for Kyle to try to stay on this lead lap until they can start gaining some of this track position. Yeah, Denny Hamlin now, is a, it's only a little over a straightaway behind where Kyle Busch is at this point. So combine that sense of urgency to stay on the lead lap with the fact that you can't press the issue too hard in these opening laps. So there is Kyle running in 35th. And there is the leader, Denny Hamlin, in the 11th, still pursued by Kurt Busch in the 78. Hamlin's led all the laps so far. We're back to Bristol after this message and a word from your ABC station. Back live at Urban Tools night race at Bristol, still caution free, but in its opening laps, Denny Hamlin led the first 22 laps, but there is a new front runner, Kurt Busch has gotten by. Denny Hamlin show you how in a second. Think you know something about speed? Buckle your seatbelt and play AT&T's Fastest Driver Challenge. Text FAST to 34763 and predict who will have the fastest times in today's race. Brought to you by the nation's fastest 4G LTE network. AT&T, rethink possible. So Kurt Busch out in front of Denny Hamlin in traffic, which when one lane is significantly better than the other will turn out to be a factor in this thing. Yeah, this is what they're going to encounter all night, and we saw this a lot last night in the nationwide race where the lap cars are running in that higher roof, which is the faster part, but that's where they've kind of set their cars up. You can take advantage of that. Have at it. Kurt Busch did it to the lead. So Kurt out front and now being the one to try and slice his way through the lap traffic. Behind them, a very dicey moment a little while ago for the 21st position as Mark Martin sliding back in traffic, driving Tony Stewart's 14, had David Gilliland and Jeff Gordon coming up behind him and trying to find a way through. Gilliland gets in the back of Mark and pushes him up the racetrack. Then the accordion effect takes over. It's not over, though. He gets off the corner, Gilliland does, and uh, slips out of the groove and gets in the wall. So Mark is back to 24th place after starting in the 11th position. Now, Gordon was able to get on in front of that and pull away from that group. Uh, looks like he's got a pretty good race car. 20 car, Matt Kenseth. Looks like he's got a really good race car on these opening laps. Matt has moved up to the fourth spot. Now, if you're one of those folks that sits at home and has the lineup sheet in front of you, you're going to say, well, he only started fifth. But that's going to be a theme of the night. He started on that inside line. A lot of folks I talked with down in the, the pit area today told me you might lose three, four, five, six spots every restart if you're on that inside line in those first few rows. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the start of the race was a lot more calm. But I think as we these restarts, we ramp up after cautions, it's going to get more intense. Yeah, a lot of the guys are really terrified that they'll, if they'll if they have to restart on the bottom, that they will lose a ton of spots late in the race when it's too late to get them back. Little knot here in some lap traffic. 22, excuse me, 2, Kozlowski, 43, Almarola. They're the ones racing for position. 51, Ryan Truex, and 40, Landon Castle are a lap down. And Junior had gone down to the bottom trying to fo uh, follow the 43 car around these lap cars, but he can't, hadn't been able to make that happen. See, Kozlowski go to the middle. Now you see some of these drivers make these very aggressive moves. A lot of times you have to do that to stay out of trouble, believe it or not. I mean, I saw right there, Brad Kozlowski made a move to get by a lap car that's probably going to help him in the long run. If he sits back there another lap or two, he's liable to get you know, hit from behind and into a wreck. I guess what do you say? That's a, a, the best defense is a good offense? That's exactly right. Oh, trouble. 51 car in the wall. Ryan Truex in the wall, turn four.
the younger brother of Martin Truex Jr. making his NASCAR Sprint Cup Series debut. He's lost the left front tire. Don't know if that was from contact from someone else that caused that tire to go down, but he was running in 38th and a lap down to the leaders, and now the first caution is out. And saved Kyle Busch because he was about two car lengths in front of his brother leading this race. That's a lot of damage on that uh, 51 car. Yeah, that's about the second time he had hit it. He hit it early in the race, too. This is from Dale Jr.'s on board. Yeah, he should have left front. Usually a left front. Clear. Down down. From earlier contact. Now, at Bristol, this racetrack unique compared to all of the others because there are two pit roads on this half-mile track. In the interest of fairness, under caution, NASCAR has rules where they basically make it one pit road. Yeah, they do. They enter, enter off of turn two, and then just every single car has to make the way all the way around the apron and, and exit in turn one. And what that does, it kind of evens it out. So it's not a disadvantage or an advantage to be on one side or the other. Now, under green, they can come in on their respective pit roads and exit on the same side. Looks like Ryan Newman in eighth place will be the first one to make the break for pit road here. Brought a lot with him. Jeff Gordon staying out. He had a fast car in that first session, first run there. And the top uh, five all stayed out with Jeff Gordon. Top uh, seven stayed out. See, they have to run that pit road speed all the way around the apron here between the backstretch pit road and the front stretch pit, pit road. There are those electronic speed monitors under there for NASCAR to watch it. Vince? Kyle Busch says he's just lacking some forward bite. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment, also a slight chassis adjustment. He particularly needs help off turn four, but otherwise the car is pretty solid. Right sides for Kozlowski. Oh, contact there as David Rudiman was just coming to his pit stall. Back it up. Brad Kozlowski came in 10th. Don't know how much damage he got there. That's pretty good lick, though. Oh, boy. Early chaos on the pit lane here at Bristol involving the Sprint Cup champ, Kozlowski. Back live at Bristol as the sun sets and the green flag waves with Kurt Busch leading from the outside lane. Oh, Denny Hamlin spin his tires, not get off to a really good start. We'll see how many spots that may cost him here. Remember, only the leader gets to choose which lane he or she starts in. Everybody else, it's set for you by NASCAR. So those on the inside lane, like Denny Hamlin, feel they're going to be at a disadvantage in these first few laps after a restart. Yeah, thoughts about moving up in front of Jeff Gordon, but uh, early in the race, I think he made the right decision to give him that lane. Now, Gordon, one of those that didn't pit under the yellow. Let's do a quick strategy recap here. Bush, Edwards, Truex, Hamlin, Gordon, Kenseth, Josh Wise, and Joey Logano, along with Brian Vickers, Jeff Burton, and Casey Mears. They all stayed on the track under the caution. Ryan Newman pitted from eighth, was the first on the restart in 12th that stopped for at least two tires. I think we're going to see this all night where everybody... Yeah, about half the field's going to pit, half of them are going to stay out. That was a great pass right there from Jeff Gordon. That's a slide job. Yeah, that was, that was a good move. At its best, yes. And I've seen him do that about four times as he yeah. picked his way up through the back of the pack before the yellow. This man's on a mission tonight. I mean, he knows that his chances of being in the chase are running out, and he has to get it done here tonight. Yeah, he looks like the old Jeff Gordon right now. Back what I was getting back to is we can, they, these cars can run about 140, maybe 150 laps on fuel. So we'll see a lot of this strategy, and the tires keep speed real well, so they don't lose a lot if you have laps on. Now you saw the contact on pit road between Brad Kozlowski in the two and David Rudeman's 83 car. Not that dude, I never saw him. He was intermixed with a whole crowd that had already pitted. That's, that was part of the issue. 
spotter and crew chief talking to Brad about uh, who's responsible there. As the driver knows, when that jack drops, he goes. Yeah, they, you saw they just changed two tires. You don't know where the guys are still getting two or four and then people that hadn't pitted yet. And so it makes it very, these, the pit road's really congested anyway, so it makes it tough. That's a wide pit road. You've got room, but it's just congested with all these cars on, still in the lead lap. And it's usually the crew chief that's the one that's giving you any information as a driver as to what may be happening. See, Brad's at kind of a bad angle, so he really can't see what's happening right here. And he's leaving after the quick stop while Rudiman hasn't even gotten to his pit stall yet. I'm amazed how tough his car is, though. I can't yeah. hardly tell if there's a dent in that two car. He's in 21st place, did not come back down pit road for any further attention to the Blue Deuce. I know you used to bring cars up here. I'd, I'd doubly reinforce the bumper, especially <laughs> for Earnhardt. We Sometimes knew was that gonna, wasn't enough. Not enough. <laughs> we knew he was going to use it. Yeah. Clint Boyer there fighting with Kislowski, trying to find a way to advance. Our in-race reporter's having a good run. I saw him make a three-wide pass a minute ago. Uh, Went to the bottom of the racetrack and came out in front off of turn four. Jimmy Johnson there, 48 car, trying to get a spot on Jamie McMurray. That's 16th and 17th. Montoya, 42. Mears, 13. Labonte, 47. All lined up right there. I watched uh, the 48 car in that first run. Looked like he took off really well, but then kind of stalled out there, and I'm just not seeing the handling uh, to his liking right yet. And this 2-15 and 15 is an interesting case study for the crew chiefs right now, Andy, because Kozlowski took just right side tires on his pit stop. Boyer changed all four. Yeah, and it, like I said, the tire holds its speed real well, but, you know, sometimes the car will act a little different, whether you've got rights on or versus four, maybe even left side tires. Update on Boyer from Vince. Yeah, it was a little tight across the center in that first run, so they made a truck bar adjustment, and their plan was to do just the opposite of what the leaders did on that first pit stop because of the fact he was starting 24th. So they wanted to get off sequence, so so far it's going according to plan for the 15. There you see the 15 really take advantage. Keselowski's been sitting there following the 30, not even trying to make a move to the bottom to, to make the pass. Warrior was able to do that and get in front, though. Kenseth in the 20, Hamlin in the 11, Truex in the 56 there. That's fourth, fifth, and sixth. Matt Kenseth continues to doggedly work that bottom lane and try and find a way to pass people. That is his job, after all. That is what <laughs> I do. Yeah. yeah. And it's something you're going to have to know as you go through the race and get yourself in different positions. Andy was talking about the different strategies. So you're going to find yourself. you got to know if you can make that happen. Kurt Busch out in front with Carl Edwards and Jeff Gordon trying to hang with him. The Outlaw having a pretty good night so far here in Thunder Valley. The Irwin Tools Night Race at Bristol. Live from Bristol Motor Speedway in East Tennessee being led by Kurt Busch. At this point, we're 75 of 500 laps complete. Time for unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series with NASCAR Mobile 13 and unlimited talk, text, and data on the Sprint Network. Flint Boyer with a very fast four-tire pit stop, fastest we've seen so far. Get unlimited access to NASCAR with the NASCAR Mobile 13 app. Join the family with the unlimited My Way plan, guaranteed for life and only for um, Sprint. See Sprint.com slash speed for details. Kurt Busch has just given up the lead and second and maybe third. I think he may have a problem. Yeah, he may. Yeah, he does. He has a problem. Carl Edwards going by in the 99. And you see Kurt Busch on pit road with some debris on the grill, but bigger problems than that. He'd fallen back to fifth place by the time he headed to the pit lane. Vince? 
Well, a heartbreaker for this 78 team because they have been so good throughout the course of the weekend. They finished fourth here in the spring, optimistic about a potential winner today. But you heard the radio, loose wheel. They're going to make a four-tire change, having some problems now on the uh, left side. This has been a problem for this team throughout the course of the season on pit lane, but they made the change in a way, almost 19 seconds. Yeah, terribly slow pissed off. It looked like maybe the right rear. I know the right rear tire changer had some problems, but it looked like it may have been down. I couldn't quite tell from that angle. But I'm not sure what's going on with it. It was definitely a slow stop. And bigger problems now. Speeding on pit road. Wow. Oh, man. Kurt will have to do a pass through just the back stretch pit lane because the stop was under the green, and we are under the green now. So he'll have to go through again at the 30 mile an hour pit road speed limit. He had a loose wheel in the race back here in March while running fourth. He came back from that to finish fourth. Still a long way to go tonight. A pile of penalty on top of that, though, it's going to make it tough. Matt Kenseth, 20, trying to get a spot. Second place on Jeff Gordon, 24. They're in some pretty heavy traffic. So Kenseth the second behind Carl Edwards now leading. Yeah. Look at that mess of traffic there. Yeah, yeah, it's just gonna and it's gonna be like that all night long. I'm just gonna say Gordon may have run his car a little hard, starting as far back as what he did, having to make passes in that first run and then left him to stay out. Uh, Could have used up that right front tire a little bit and. Now it's just kind of taking it a little bit easier. They've got themselves in a good position now, uh, much better than where they started to kind of make things happen if they can get a caution now and get some tires on it. Yeah, if he could just maintain the top 10 spot until uh, they can make another pit stop when everybody comes down pit road, this will uh, be a good move strategically for the 24. Three wide with the leader in traffic. 99 Edwards forcing the issue there. We said you had to be aggressive. That may be taking it to the extreme, but he made it work this time. Now Matt Kenseth in that yellow 20 trying to find a way through the traffic. 35, Josh Wise got some troubles. Caution is out. Yeah, that's too bad. Josh Wise was running in the top 10. Remember, he didn't pit under that first caution. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong. You saying we need to pit again? Yes, copy, Kurt. Got to pit again. Let's go on the pit here. So second caution of the race out for California native Josh Wise. All right, bring it to me, bring it to me. And he's got some pretty good damage on the right front of that car. You see Kirk Bush just made a pit stop on the inside. Now, I saw some damage a little bit on the right front of Kirk Bush car. Didn't know where it came from. Now we know. Get low, 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 get low. All clear, all clear, all clear. Yellow's out, yellow's out. Bottom. 22 following him. Bottom, 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 clear, low, 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 clear, clear, clear. Ding, ding, Jeff Burton got a good look at that one, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did, and did a nice job of avoiding it. That's not the easiest thing to do, just to turn these cars immediately. So after the problem that brought Kurt from the lead back to fifth, then to pit road, then the speeding penalty that follows, he has contact with Josh Wise there, and the caution is out. Uh, and damage to both cars. Pit road open here, and again, expect we'll see another one of those split pit stop agendas. We'll find it happening that way all night, Jamie. And Kevin Harvick, he's been happy with the car, said he could use a little more rear grip. He took right sides only on the first stop. Four tires is the call this time. Vince? Bottom of the screen, Matt Kenseth likes his car. They're going to make a slight air pressure adjustment just to give him a little bit of help. Otherwise, it's all good. Four tires and Sunoco fuel for the 20. How about your race leader, the 99 car of Carl Edwards. Edwards said the car's a little bit free up off all the while. Very, very good in traffic. Four tires for Edwards, no adjustments. Jeff Gordon, top of your screen, tight off, very tight off. One round up on the track bar and four tires. Dave. 
bottom of your screen, Martin Truex Jr. gives up third. His car started out loose. That's why he got past it, went to the tight side. Track bar adjustment and four tires. He'll get passed by several cars on pit road. See the track position gained by Ryan Newman, but some others didn't pit. We'll have a new leader when we come back. Back at Bristol Motor Speedway, we're working our second caution of the night. Well, just a few laps ago, we were on that very rooftop. Fun, too. It was fun and loud. Now we're back inside the Quick and Loans <laughs> ESPN Pit Studio. Hey there, it's Nicole with Rusty, Brad, and Ray. Let's get you caught up in all the action that's happened so far with the Five Hour Energy Rapid Recap. If you're just joining us, Brad Kozlowski had contact on lap 43. Yeah, just leaving his pit road, just gets in the back of the 93 car there, a bad break for him, and uh, but he's back on the track, all's good right now. Kyle Busch started 43rd, right now he's 13th. He's done a great job maneuvering through traffic, been very, very patient getting himself there. Coming back to the green, Alan. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the new leader of this race, Nicole, did not pit from seventh place at the caution flag. on Carl Edwards trying to bull his way back up through some of this traffic that didn't pit in front of him in that 99 car. Yeah, and Martin Truex found himself in a spot he didn't want to be in there just a minute ago. Three wide in the middle off of turn four. Made it work. 16 car, Greg Biffle just scraped the wall in turn four. He keeps going. Biffle running sixth. Look at that. David Reagan in the 34, one of those that did not pit. I mean, look at this three wide racing. Look at this. This is for position. Oh, Kyle Busch in the 18, hanging wow. on. He is hanging on. Jimmy Johnson drove it in there, trying to get himself out of that three wide situation. All right, quick update. Junior, Boyer, Montoya, Labonte, Menard, Biffle, Reagan were the ones that did not pit under the caution. Ryan Newman and Kyle Busch were those uh, among those that got just right side tires here. And that 18 gained some track position with that strategy. Yeah, that was a good move for the 18 to kind of get back in sync with some of these other guys and be right in the mix. Yeah, they're in a situation now where they can run their race and make passes and do things that will keep them in the mix. Although this car doesn't look like it's handling very well with those two tires on it right now. What kind of comments have you gotten from the 11 and 20 so far? Seems like they start out loose at the beginning of the race, and then after that cycle, they tighten it up. Yeah, he's asking that because he's been in traffic and he's been, you know, in a situation where he doesn't really have a good hack on how his car is handling. So he wanted to know. Uh oh. He's in the wall uh -oh. now. Contact there. Joey Logano also with some pretty good damage on the 22. And Joey's going to probably have to pit here. Kyle Bush has got a lot of, a lot of damage on the left rear of his. I believe that will cut his left rear tire. Caution, Caution is out. Debris. Caution for debris. Yeah, Danica Patrick behind this got up into the wall also. And for Joey Logano, off that big win in Michigan last Sunday, but one of those drivers in the thick of that fight to make the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. A bad oh, night is... it's going to be. Definitely change the balance quite a bit when I... Bad night is not what he needs. Okay, right there is Kyle Busch. He's racing. This is all for position. Yeah, I think he's going to get loose right there. Yeah, got up in and... Just as we talked about with everybody stacked up, one car gets loose. Yeah, and there's nowhere to go. I mean, yeah. the groove is right there next to the wall. There's just nowhere to go, and even for the guys behind this. Joe Logano just a victim. And again, you're running so fast with these cars that you just don't have time to react. I mean, it's always been difficult here, but they're running faster than ever around this track. This caution was a break for, for Joey Logano because he was going to have to pit for sure, and for the 18 as well. Uh, Kyle will be the first one to come to the pit lane from 17th. Spot David Reagan also from 60. Yeah, and all that track position the game's lost now. Yep. Vince, 
Well, they want to uh, take a look at the damage with the uh, right side and also the left side for Kyle Busch. Kyle said that the uh, it feels a little bit too loose. That was the handling of the car. They're going to check the toe here also. Not going to change the toe or address that issue, but just check it during this stop if possible to get an understanding of uh, how much damage is done. Dave? Brad Keselowski, after earlier problems, had taken lefts and rights. Still not happy with the balance of that race car. They'll begin another chassis adjustment and take on four tires this time. As for Joey Logano, last week's winner, they were so confident coming into this weekend, just knowing that they could do what they had been doing, which is gaining in the points, making up ground, but they would have liked another win. They would have liked some more points. They'll just have to fix it now and see what they can salvage, Alan. Long way to go tonight here at uh, Bristol Day, but Logano in some trouble early. We're back after this message and a word from your ABC station. Back at Bristol as the field gets the one to go signal. And we get ready to restart the Irwin Tools night race at Bristol and see what's around the next corner in terms of crashing and bashing. Next weekend, it's on to the Atlanta Motor Speedway, some high-speed super speedway racing. From Hotlanta next Saturday night, the Nationwide Series on ESPN2 starting at 7 Eastern time. And next Sunday night, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series presented by Pennzoil, 7 Eastern time on ESPN. That's uh, one week from tomorrow. So Dale Earnhardt Jr., the race leader, choosing the outside lane with Clint Boyer to his inside. Kyle Busch goes to the back of the line. Too many men over the wall as they tried to effect repairs on the 18. Danica Patrick just off the pit lane as the leaders swarm her up to speed. I see sparks flying off of that 10. I'd be nervous if I was behind her, not knowing if that car's got some problems or not. Yeah, she had to get some damage uh, in the front there when she hit the wall behind all of that with Kyle Busch and Joey Logano. Back inside, bottom. Got a good piece of the wall, too. Yeah, a lot of times that'll happen. She saw what was happening in front. She tried to get on the brakes. That just slides the nose, and then that puts you up over that little bit of a cushion where there's no grip, and that got her into the wall. Clint Boyer, 15, trying to work the bottom on Dale Earnhardt Jr., 88, to see if he can grab the lead. He's working hard uh, to make this bottom work and get himself out front. Both of these cars pitted on lap 43, but Jr. got two tires. Clint Boyer got four. Kind of interested to see how this is going to work out. Junior holding on so far. Yeah, Bobby Labonte there in third spot, doing a great job here tonight. 47 car, the former champ. And Edwards back there right behind them, too, has fresher tire. You see the, uh, the 47 right behind him is the 99. He's got 50 lap fresher tires, not really able to close on. On the left part of the screen there, Kyle Busch is in another mess back here trying to get through these lap cars. They're racing. Some of them aren't even lap cars. Mark Martin, they're, they're racing two and three wide through every corner. Because he was a penalty car at that last restart, he had to go all the way to the back of the line and start behind all the lap cars, not just up with the lead lap cars. A little bobble there for Labonte in the 47. Can Carl Edwards put the slide job on him here? Nope. Well, watching Bobby Labonte's car, he's really getting a good run off the corner in that 47. He's actually able to pull away. What a nice job. Hasn't been one of his favorite tracks over the years, mainly because he hasn't had the success. You kind of, as a driver, you yeah. rate him that way. Yeah. Well, that's why Rusty said this was his favorite sure, track. He won yeah. here heck, nine yeah. times. Yeah. Now, he won the race here 12 times a year. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Daytona was probably your favorite. I enjoyed going there. Yes. <laughs> Kurt Busch was behind the wall in that 78 car. He's just come back onto the track. Vince. 
Well, they had a right rear issue. They couldn't get the lug nuts tight, so they brought him in initially and put a spacer on the uh, right rear. That did not solve the issue. They realized they had a greater problem, had to come in behind the wall and replace the right rear hub. They've done that. They believe the issue is addressed. Yeah, what happens there when you have a loose wheel? It really kills the threads, and you sometimes can put a spacer on there and catch some, some maybe newer threads. In that case, I think you see a good lead change right here. Clint Boyer's car looks really strong. Like I said, he has the four tires from his last stop. But anyway, they had to change that hub so they could uh, get some good studs to hold that thing on. They ran it too long with a loose wheel. So Kurt Busch went from leading now to being back in 41st place, 26 laps down. And Clint Boyer went from 24th starting spot to the race lead. Since you talked about Brian Patty engineering some yeah. creative strategy. Doing pretty good so far. Kansas Clint out in front here in East Tennessee. We're back to Bristol after a word from your ABC stations. Just past one quarter distance in the Irwin Tools night race at Bristol for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series live from Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. Clint Boyer is the race leader, the sixth different driver to lead tonight. Major League Baseball. I was going to have some line about knocking it out of the park, but so far <laughs> it's just been knocked around the park tonight here in Bristol. Has been that, and it's only going to get uh, more entertaining as we go through the night. Brad Keselowski in the two, knocked around on pit road earlier, running in 19th place, just ahead of the driver who started on pole, Denny Hamlin in that 11, who's back in 20th. I think Brad struggles with handling a little bit. You can see right there you know, off the corner. Having a few wiggles. Doesn't look exactly like he wants it. I just haven't even been able to see him make passes on cars that you know that he's two or three tenths quicker than. He just can't make that. It's like he might get by Casey Mears here. And Dave Denny Hamlin won this race a year ago, started on pole tonight, but he's back mid-pack. And I'm looking at both those cars, Alan. First on the two, as for the front end of Brad Keselowski's car, he doesn't like the way it's working. Same kind of story for Denny Hamlin, but they made an adjustment for that, and he hasn't done any better. He said he was pushing the nose on the throttle. They made a big track bar adjustment when he came down pit road last time, but no results so far. Dave, okay, thanks. So Hamlin struggling mid-pack for the moment. Carl Edwards was the race leader before the pit stops. Others played the hopscotch strategy. Edwards trying to work his way through Bobby Labonte and pick up third spot. And this would be a slide job right here, and I think he'll take that third spot. Will he keep it, though? Yeah, I don't think Bobby will put that slide job. Carl's going to have the preferred line now. So Edwards up to third. 42 Montoya challenged by 56 Truex for fifth and sixth. You like that analogy Truex made? Racing at Bristol like having a boxing match in an elevator? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you just can't get away. You can't run and hide anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Your opponent's beating you around and uh, you'd like to, to be able to get away, but you just can't do that. Look at the but he looks he like he has there. a good car. Yeah, that's nice. Can he finish the pass though? The Truex is in a position. He's here tonight. He knows he has that win, but a second one he knows would pretty much assure him of getting in the chase. But how big of a chance do you take to fall back and lose points? Yeah, and here's the situation he's in. The way they run, he's actually in the top ten, and he would make it on points. So he doesn't want to throw that away. They're on the very top anymore. Some kind of rubber patches up there. And I'm, there's something ahead of them breaking loose. As if there weren't enough problems with racing around here at high speeds. I've seen a few drivers really sit. It's like they bubbled, and I think that's kind of what Kyle Busch hit when we saw him earlier. And I can see the darker spots. And as a driver, that's just like hitting oil, hitting water, hitting anything, because you just lose whichever tire hits that. Yeah, we haven't seen that in a while. Like he said, Martin Zip used to get it a lot. And where they ground this racetrack, it looks like it's taking rubber in these chunks and it makes it really rough. I see it one and two and a little small patch in three and four. There you go. Yeah. And the issue is everybody's running there. So it's getting that rubber put down. It, they'll pull it up under caution uh, when we have that. But nobody really runs up there under caution. So 
is probably going to be there for the majority of the night and something else you're going to have to deal with as you try to make speed through the center of the corner. How badly does Dale Earnhardt Jr. need a good night? Well, really, really badly. Yeah, he does, but, it, you know, it probably won't surprise you that Kyle Busch has the best average finish here, but it might surprise you that this guy has the second best average finish of all the drivers tonight. Last couple of races, disaster for Dale Jr. and his advantage over 11th place in the standings. His hold on a playoff position has been cut more, almost in a third, in two thirds. A third, two thirds, how would you phrase that? A lot. <laughs> hey, okay. How about that? Thanks. The, the, but the, the good thing for them is that they were running well in both of those. It's not like they don't have the performance to have three solid races and keep them solidly in the top ten. Junior running second while Clint Boyer leaves the Irwin Tools night race at Bristol. Little Saturday night cruise. Think you know something about speed? Buckle your seatbelt. Play AT&T's Fastest Driver Challenge by texting FAST to 34763 and predict you'll have the fastest laps in tonight's race. Brought to you by the nation's fastest 4G LTE network. AT&T, rethink possible. On board with race leader Clint Boyer here in Bristol. As he tries to put a lap on Landon Castle, we go up to speed with Nationwide Insurance and check in on the leader with Vince. No issues whatsoever for the 15. Brett Griffin, uh, Clint Boyer's spotter, assuring him that he's the fastest car on the track. Navigating traffic, the only issue. Be patient, be smart. They're looking to pit around lap 200. Doc? Behind him, Carl Edwards, was when he pitted on lap 93, they told him that set of tires was used up. It was gone. Left, worst, and right. So be patient. Don't be overly aggressive. He's trying to dial it back a little bit. James. And behind him is Bobby Labonte, been very quiet on the radio, happy with his race car. Dale Jr. in the 88 on the radio right now as we speak, saying that his car is just getting a little snug. He really wants to pit. He wants four tires. Remember, they've only pitted one time for right sides only. Behind him is the 47 of Bobby Labonte, been very quiet on his radio, happy with the car, and been very methodical. He, too, only has pitted one time, so he's waiting for those fresh tires. And it's been another good run for the 42 of Juan Pablo Montoya. So I had a little handful there off the corner. But the car's been a little bit tight across the center. That's been the only issue so far. Montoya likes his race car, Doc. And how about the five-time Bristol winner, Jeff Gordon, starting 32nd, drove it all the way to second spot to the car. with a little bit tight on throttle. He came in and made a track bar adjustment. Jeff said the car is better. But the oil temperature right now is 290. Okay. Doc, you heard the frustration from Martin Truex Jr. a few laps ago. He was one of the guys to start running this high line a couple years ago, found great success with it. Mostly tonight, the car has been tied up the corner. He's pitted once for four tires, Vince. Well, in the 20 of Matt Kenseth, a little bit snug. That's been the only issue. You see, they last pitted on lap 93 to help him out with an adjustment there. They felt like they had a much better car than what a lot of people thought. They started in the top five. They've been hanging around throughout the course of the evening, Doc. And behind him, Eric Almarola changed left side tires, first stop, right side tires, second stop. Then the car is actually running better now that has all night long. Really, really turning well in the corner for the car owned by the King Richard Petty. Behind him, the 39 car, the Brickyard 400 winner, Ryan Newman. This is the team that said we are going to gamble tonight, next week, and the following week. I've got to win one more race. We're getting to Jace. Ryan having a good car, and it is outstanding in the turn turning very well. Alan. All right, Doc, thanks. There's an update on the top 10 for you. The leader, Clint Boyer, has reached the really dicey part of his lead at the moment. He's got two seconds on second place Carl Edwards, but he's caught the end of the field, and he's in some really heavy lap traffic. Yeah, normally when the leader catches lap cars, Be patient right here. they're giving the flag to move over to the inside, but everybody's running around the top, so that makes it difficult for the leader and everybody else to pass them. And you know these cars right in front. Oh! He got touched. He got turned the around. The race leader. Caution. Yeah, Can they all avoid him? No. I think Jeff Gordon got into the back of Bobby Labonte as he slowed. Yep. Hey, right, roll, 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 roll. We'll pay it when it's open. So what was that I said about touching wow. situation for the race yeah. leader? 
Clint Boyer tapped from behind by a car he had uh, lapped. And now the damage after Bobby Labonte got tapped and spun into the side of Boyer's car. Labonte's excellent run now also wrinkled up. Yeah, the question is going to be for Boyer is whether he'd been any suspension parts. It looks like it hit right behind the left front. Pit road is closed here. And Clint was doing all he could, you know, to try to race his way around these lap cars. You see the 93. It's a run. See, that's Kyle Busch right in front of Clint. Wow. Pounded him. Yeah. Travis Quapel in that 93 car, again, had just been lapped by the leader, Clint Boyer. And here comes Bobby Labonte. Yeah, now Clint turns down some, but he is the race leader, and you've just been lapped. And that was a bad spot to be sitting in. That's yeah, unfortunate for both of those cars and drivers right there. They had great races going. So pit road open here. Carl Edwards is now the new leader. And uh, Brian Patty and company will get their first up close look at Clint Boyer's 15 car here. Jamie? And the 88 bunch very happy. They were 20 away from their scheduled stop. Tight center is the call. Four tires here and an air pressure adjustment. Vince? Well, on the 42 of Juan Pablo Montoya is still a little bit too tight through the turns. They're going to make a wedge adjustment, an air pressure adjustment, four tires, Doc. 99 cars that I'm smoking the left rear, worried about left side tires. Going to go ahead and change four tires, half a round chassis adjustment, what they call for an air pressure. Below them, Jeff Ford said the car he is a little tight in traffic, four tires, no changes. Dave. On your screen, Martin Truex Jr. will give up fourth for Sunoco fuel and four tires. They'll reduce the air pressure in the right side tires. This car was mostly tight, but sometimes loose off the corner as well. A small piece of tape removed from the front end as well. Carl Edwards holds the lead on the stop. More strategy played under this caution. First tonight in Bristol, Brad Keselowski with contact on pit road. Kyle Busch, Joey Logano tangled on the track, and then Clint Boyer leading the race. Tapped by a car he just lapped, and Bobby Labonte in the 47 having an excellent run. Turned around in the stack up and into the side of Boyer. And we get ready to go back racing in one more lap with now Carl Edwards back in the lead of this race. Speeding penalties on the pit stops. Joey Logano, Paul Menard, and David Reagan. You see Clint Boyer back on track. Bobby Labonte has taken his car behind the wall. How about Boyer, Vince? Well, that could have been a lot worse for Clint Boyer. Just talked with Brian Patty, the crew chief. He said, we actually pulled out that left side damage. We feel like we're good to go. No worse for the wear. They dodged a bullet there. Lost track position, though, Alan. All right, Vince Boyer, back in uh, 26th place right now. Right side tires only for 17 Stenhouse and 11 Hamlin. First and second rows inside. Carl Edwards, 99, the race leader, restarts the race. Stenhouse slid up in front of him, and Stenhouse not all that fast. You can see Denny Hamlin able to take that second spot away with those two tires. Gordon gets clear. Dale Jr. now next to work on Stenhouse. I thought for sure that the 11 car from Denny Hamlin would be going straight back on the inside with just two tires. I think he's going forward. Hey, 
Rouse is in a real difficult spot here. His car's not very fast. He's going to have a bunch of fast cars stacking up behind him. And if he can get out of this without getting turned around, he'll be lucky. Yeah, that's going to be his biggest thing is not getting run over at this point in time. When people take that shot to the bottom lane, if they try and make it stick and slip, it's your left rear that gets hooked. And nothing good comes with that. Yeah. Or if they've got somebody that just uh, knows they can't go to the bottom because they've got cars right on, right on their bumper and their car's not working down there, then they're going to sit there and beat on your back bumper until they get you out of the way. Yeah. I, I just can't possibly imagine, and I've been doing this a long time, but I can't even begin to imagine how aggravating it can be <laughs> in traffic here at this track. No, it's worse than any rush hour traffic that you're in whenever you need to be at something important or something like that. Obviously, it's at high speed, and you just you get so aggravated, you know, and you want to keep those emotions in check. Just difficult to do. There's somebody to keep an eye on tonight. That five car, Casey Kane. I've watched his lap times, and there's points in this race where he has had one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. Problem is, they qualified terribly. Uh, not that terribly. They started seventh, but the strategy shuffled them back a little bit. You see he ran as low as 28th. And if they can get this hopscotch pit strategy to work out right and be up the front toward the end, he's somebody to keep an eye on. Yeah, it's always seemed to be a driver that you know, likes to, to run here, does well here. I think the throttle control that he has really serves as the, the driving style that you need at this racetrack well. Just going to have to keep themselves in a position here. You can see him down there trying to make this bottom work. Yeah. He's one of those guys that usually when the grid's on the bottom, you'll find him <laughs> up on the top where they're not. Tonight is kind of reversed for him. You see Kevin Harvick in that mix. He's one uh -oh. of the drivers that loves might, the bottom. Might see, get a break here. Yeah, Truex slip a little bit up on the top. You can just see how much better that top groove is. If Truex slips, bobbles, and still keeps the spot. see the difference that the big run that you get off the corner as you get back to the throttle that upper groove helps your car to turn right in the center and then you just get such a launch off the corner ninety three of travis quapel is off the pace he had just popped the wall with the right side of that car again the right side Looking a little low. So Quapple heads to the pit lane. Carl Edwards, two times a winner of the night race at Bristol. Looking for a big victory tonight, out in front, but still shy of halfway back after this message and a word from your ABC station. Back in the Irwin Tools night race at Bristol under the caution flag that just waved a second ago. When Tony Raines in the 33 car ran into some trouble, Jimmy Johnson collected the ever so smallest piece of it. Tony Raines in that 33. Went in the corner right on the bottom. Must have had some kind of problem like a right front tire down. You see he's right here. He's already on the bottom of the racetrack and his cars are coming by. Just takes him right. See Keselowski lucky to get by. Jimmy not so lucky. How big a piece did Jimmy catch? Pretty good. He came down pit road. Another car that came down pit road was a 24. I'm not sure why he pitted there. How is the damage to the 48, Jamie? Well, Chad Knauss was a little concerned. He wanted them to jack it up on that left side. They stayed in the pit box for quite some time to look at the damage, make sure there's no rubs. They took four tires while they were at it. But in the meantime, Chad's just keeping an eye and telling the team, be ready with Barabon. Well, there's a good look at it, Andy. Yeah, it looks fine to me. I'm not too worried about that. Now, the one that is the most interesting under this caution was Jeff Gordon who gave up third place and was one of only nine cars on the lead lap who pitted and docked the only one of the top 12 who came in. 
Yeah, that he had no choice. The oil temperature had gone to 290 and was staying there, but then the water temperature began to follow. Went to 265, and right before the yellow came out, the water temperature was over 290. They had to come in, take tape off the grill, and make sure they get some air to the front of that car and cool it down. Yeah, that makes sense, but that's a tough break for, for Jeff. He had a good car, or has a good car. He was right in a good spot, too. He was running third or fourth. Well, the four-time champ started back in 32nd place, raced his way up to compete for the lead. He can do it again. Now he's got to do it again for 20th. Oh, yeah, you can. It's just a matter that you don't want to put yourself in that position any more times than you have to. You know, you've worked your tail off here before halfway to get yourself in a position to win this race and then have that to happen. You get set back like that into traffic, make you nervous as a driver now? Or has yeah. he been through this enough time? That no, after you get over getting mad, then you get nervous. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, what's going to happen in front of me now? Yeah. And the way things have been going for them in particular, and just Candy pointed out early in the show that they, they just nothing good has been happening for this race team. And with that break right there, kind of continues that stream. Here's a look at your restart order. 29 cars on the lead lap. Jeff Gordon is going to be all the way back in 20th. Carl Edwards is the leader. Maybe Denny Hamlin get a break from his teammate Matt Kenseth there, but I don't think that's happening. See, these spots are too hard to come by to give it up. <laughs> Kenseth the second. Now Dale Jr. 88 left the battle. Hamlin in the 11 for third. Carl Edwards has to feel a little bottled up for the restart. Warning issued from NASCAR Race Control that they didn't think that was the way they wanted it done in the future. Words to that effect. To paraphrase, you can do it right or you can do it from the rear. Yes. You basically get one warning of that most of the time. Casey Kane stubbornly sticking to that bottom lane in that five car. He really is. He's kind of committed to that. And I think that he, he's been working on his car most of the race to try to get it to work on the bottom so he can make passes. Because if he could get it to work there, there's nobody else that's going to take his lane away. He's got it all to himself. Yeah, right now back in 12th spot. Yeah, nobody going to impede his progress down there for sure. Just so hard with what's happening up on the top side of the track. The less gear that we talked about so you get that drive off to where you can really get that jump that you're needing. Jeff Gordon back in the soup. Hoping the pot doesn't boil. Watching the temperatures on that 24 car. As Doc reported the reason Jeff had to pit there. It's always a problem here because the average speed is pretty slow. You're in this bowl where there's not a lot of air stirring, so it's really kind of a challenge to keep these cars cool anyway. Eighty-three car, David Rudeman. That is a lead lap car. Remember, he was the one involved in the contact on pit road with Brad Kozlowski earlier. His David. team using some strategy to get him back some track position. And David Strimmey also at 30 right behind him having a good run. It's an awful position. Joey Logano with the damage from the incident on the track earlier that involved Kyle Busch. Logano picking his way back up to 15th place in the 22. Yeah, I've been watching him too, kind of like Casey Kane. Been trying to work that bottom, make it work to get himself moved forward here. Is he going to make it three wide here? Yep. yep. Sure, why not? <laughs> How about the 22, Dave? Not bad, considering that car will still go three wide. He said once again, clear of traffic over the radio. It's really not bad. Just a little bit tighter since his early runs. And they were reminding him that you're not even yet to halfway in this race. So keep it going. We'll make our way forward. 
I know they remind you of that sometimes just to, so you'll be patient, but that's a bad thing to hear as you've been out there. You're already tired and sweating. <laughs> yeah. and you're waiting here 25 hard. to go. Yeah, yeah. They say, oh, you're not even halfway yet. Oh, great. Looking at Clint Boyer back in 23rd. Remember, spun out of the lead at lap 176. Try to make it work. Making it work out front is Carl Edwards. Led more laps than anyone else has so far tonight. Just shy of halfway in the Urban Tools night race at Bristol. Race for the lead, heating up here in Bristol Motor Speedway. 99 Carl Edwards finding 20 Matt Kenseth closing in on him and they've closed in on the tail end of the field in lap traffic. Matt's going to get a shot. Yeah, once again, going to get interesting as they try to negotiate these lap cars who are running that same high, fast roof that the leaders are making work. There that little is. slip's kind of what Kenseth was waiting on. Yep. Can he do anything with it, though? He's going to have to go to the middle if he's going to. Not sure it's time to press that issue. You gonna have any running room? Matt's gonna hope to get a big run to where he can pull down the uh, he got it here. So the new leader, Matt Kenseth, in the Joe Gibbs Racing 20 car. A four-time winner already this year, but not yet locked into the championship. Matt's son, Ross, making his first start in the ARCA Series tomorrow up in Madison, Wisconsin. Qualified on the pole today. That's great. Congratulations to uh, Ross, and we wish him well in his ARCA debut on Sunday. Sounds like he's going to chip off the old block. Yeah, yeah definitely. He's probably got a lap of a thousand around that racetrack in other kind of cars before. Update on the race leader from Vince. Well, it's been a good race car. They've made a couple of slight air pressure adjustments. That's it for the 20 of Matt Kenseth. But he did dodge a bullet earlier when he got up into the wall and had a little bit of contact. Luckily, no significant damage on him. Now he's got the same traffic problems that bottled up the guy he just passed for the lead, Carl Edwards. It makes it even more difficult when the lap cars are running side by side. Whoop. Yep, see Carl Edwards give uh, Matt just a little bit of a break right there. This race has a long green run at the end of it. Lap traffic could be what decides who wins. Yeah, certainly could. We've already seen it take out one of our leaders in Clint Boyer. Yep. Seven car Dave Blaney is the last one on the lead lap. He's not just going to lay over and let him by. Pretty good race in here. Brad Kozlowski, two. Martin Truex Jr., 56 for ninth and tenth spaces. And Jeff Gordon in that 20. Remember, gave up third for the pit stop a little while ago. Watching Jeff. If, if, if you're a fan of dirt track racing, you're familiar with the term slide job. It's a term they use on a dirt track when a guy runs into the corner on the bottom of someone and just drives into the corner and slides up in front of the guy and hope he stops sliding by the time he gets to the wall. Jeff Gordon is doing that here on the Bristol High Banks. He's showing these guys how to make a slide job work on the concrete. See Carl Edwards trying to take the lead back from Matt Kenseth here, not able to make that bottom work. You talk about Gordon doing that. You know, something that he learned to do in racing midgets and sprint cars on the asphalt. You, know, you had no mirrors in those or anything, and you 
you know, you just had to do it by feel, and that's kind of the way he's driven around here tonight. Not exactly sure. I'm sure his spotter hasn't told him a number of those times that he was clear, but he makes it work anyway. Yeah, I remember some races at the old Indianapolis Raceway Park in the midget. Yep. That's where I first saw Jeff race, and he would pull those slide jobs to perfection. Yeah, he was like six or seven when he was doing yeah. that. Wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, Gordon is up into the top 10 again after having to make that uh, out of sequence pit stop a little while ago because of uh, heating concerns on the 24 car. Getting the run, committing to it, sliding up. <laughs> and every now and then, needing a little give and take. I thought the throttle stuck a couple of times he was doing so fast. Fast race car tonight for Jeff Gordon. Back live, the Irwin Tools Night Race at Bristol for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series says the caution flag waves for debris on the back straightaway. Perhaps from the 55 car? So he's missed a lot of There's damage there. The right front fender. See so sliding off the board. Got a piece of the wall. Good. Clint Warrior almost got a piece of him, too. Leaders last in at lap 179 for the top eight. Will they all pit here? Looks like it. And everybody else is going to follow them in too, just about. Jamie? Kevin Harvick, one complaint all night, needs more rear grip. Air pressure adjustment is the call for tires. Vince? Loose in, a little snug off turn four, just right side tires for the 20 at Kenseth, and they went one round down on the right rear. Doc? And Carl Edwards has got to tighten this thing up. They're going to go four tires, drop the track bar a half a round, and try to tighten it up a little bit, fill it up with some go fuel. Dave. Ricky Senhouse Jr. gives up seventh position. His car was a little bit loose in and off. They were talking about a four-tire change. They did take two last time. As for Denny Hamlin in the 11 car, he said it really came around for him at the end, just a little tight in the center of the corner. He gives up fourth position for this pit road strategy. It'll just be two tires for the 11. But he stalled in her hiccup, leaving his stall, Dave. Racing tonight in Bristol, Tennessee at the world's fastest half mile. Racing at the incredibly fast mile and a half Atlanta Motor Speedway next weekend. Saturday night, the NASCAR Nationwide Series, 7 Eastern ESPN2. And the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, one week from tomorrow. Our telecast presented by Atlanta, from, uh, by Pennzoil from Atlanta next Sunday at 7 Eastern on ESPN. I'm trying to hurry because we were going to miss the restart, but they've added a lot before the restart, so. Uh, it gives us time to explain a couple things. I said Denny Hamlin looked like he stalled leaving the pit lane. Denny's about to demonstrate for us something we heard from a lot of crew chiefs and spotters earlier. Yeah, the outside lane is so critical to be on that restart. If you're on the inside, you can lose a ton of spots. I think what they had done is some math and realized they need to let one car pass them to get that even spot. The only problem is, I don't think it worked out. One of the cars that was in front of him for the restart has been penalized. Matt Kenseth going to the back of the line for speeding on pit road. Let's check with Doc. On the one hand, the 24 car of Jeff Gordon says the car is awesome. It's the most fun I've had in a long time. On the other hand, the car that was running hot is not cooling down. And now crew chief Alan Gustafson says we might have lost the ductwork inside the car, along with a little bump in the nose, but whatever. Water temperature still above 265 and concerned here in the 24 pit. Uh, restart waved off there because uh, they were trying to get a few people in the proper positions. And so we'll get one more lap and go. Uh, so up front, 27 car Paul Menard, 18 car Kyle Busch did not pit under the yellow flag. The 99 car of Carl Edwards is the first with four tires. So 88 Junior, 42 Montoya, and 11 of Hamlin with just the right sides. Yeah, and I believe the 39 and the 24 just behind those also got two tires there. And keep in mind, Jeff Gordon had made that unscheduled stop earlier for four tires, so he's got fresher lefts than most of those other cars do. That took two. Oh, 
Almanard got really wide there off turn two. Kyle Busch started last, looking for the lead. Edward just been awfully good tonight in that 99. He's through to third. Yeah, he's been complaining that car being a little bit on the loose side. If I could get him tightened up, he could really go. He's got the grip that he needs right now with those four new tires. He can just make it work on the longer run. He may be the man to beat for sure. And Hamlin in that 11. They wanted the outside lane for the restart. Didn't get it because of the Kenza penalty. Now struggling to find a spot in line. Nobody in this line, this line is going to give him a break. No, Earth. especially that one coming right there. Not the, their best friends, the Joey Logano. Logano making a nice comeback, though, with the damage that he sustained in that little mix-up they had up in three and four. Here's Edwards on Kyle Busch for second. What a night for Kyle Busch, winner of two races that have been held already here this race week at Bristol. A car that had set the fast lap in Sprint Cup practice, going for the pole in qualifying. Spun, caught the wall. His team repaired that car before the race today. Started last, worked his way up, got caught when his car snapped loose and Joey Logano right behind him popped the back corner of that 18. You can see it's all bandaged up. And now through a strategy play by crew chief Dave Rogers, here's Kyle back up in second place. Yeah, I was wanting to see how this would work out because I watched this car as we were watching other things, but watched him really struggle back in traffic. I mean, he was able to make very few, if any, passes to move forward. And here he is out there on older tires and able to hold this car up in second, Vince. Well, they've just had a little bit of tightness in the car and the steering wheel a little offline, but I think Kyle's done a heck of a job with it so far. They're looking to pit around lap 350, and if that's the case, they might be able to get it to the end. It's going to be close, but just maybe one more stop for the 18. Well, when you're in the position this team is, which is basically, you're, you're in the championship. Yeah. And your driver has a chance to make a weekend triple sweep. You have nothing to lose by gambling on some caution flag laps to get to the finish if a track position steal can fall your way. Well, they had to do something because of that starting position, and uh, you know, that's a good gamble. They've, they've made good gambles all night. Carl Edwards not able to get by Kyle, and now Dale Jr. taking a peek on Edwards. Yeah, he might regret trying to make this. Montoya's sitting right there having a great run tonight, looking to take that spot away, and does from Dale Jr. Now Jeff Gordon, Joey Logano. Yeah, unless you're just sure you're going to go into the next corner and make that slide job that we talked and showed what Jeff Gordon was doing in making passes, you just don't need to venture down there. That car in front of you may slow up a little bit. You're just going to have to slow up behind him. Again, unless you're willing to make that charge, you see it's cost Junior four spots in trying to make that pass on Carl Edwards. Falls in line behind Kevin Harvick in eighth place. Paul Menard got caught for speeding on pit road earlier, so his crew chief slugger Labby makes the strategy play under this caution, leaves him out of the track, and he's the race leader here at Bristol. Paul Menard leads at Bristol as we check out what's fresh off the wire, served by KFC. Among those six cautions tonight, Clint Boyer hit from behind and turned around while leading this race. After leading some 50 laps, Carl Edwards has led most of them tonight. Kurt Busch with troubles after leading a lot of laps earlier. A vibration turned out to be a loose wheel, turned out to do some damage on his car, and Kurt is running around 25 laps down in 38th place. Jimmy Johnson uh -oh. in trouble. Yeah, Matt Kenseth uh, just tried to put a slight job on him. They kind of went bad, didn't complete it over off turn two. You see Edwards now taking that second spot away from Kyle Busch. 
But he put Jimmy Johnson up into the wall, and then I think he got some more of the wall down in three and four. I was just talking about how Jimmy was back in 24th place and really hadn't gone anywhere. See, Kenza just didn't quite make that. He gets Jimmy up. Didn't really hit the wall there, but got him slowed down. Here they are, three wide into three. I believe he did get a piece there. Probably a frustrated driver down there right now, Jamie. Yes, frustrated driver and team. They actually pitted two more times. You see that extra Barabon black tape in the front. On lap 259, they put four tires on. Then he pitted again right after that at 261. Just to put a little more tape, they're a little concerned about a hole in the front end. All right, that's the story from the 48 side of things. What about the story from the 20 side of things? Matt Kenseth running 24th. And if things happen faster than what a spotter can tell you around here, they almost have to at times anticipate things. Yeah, there was a point in time he was cleared, and then all of a sudden he wasn't. Yeah, but you, yeah, by the time he says that, that hole is closed back up. So yeah, that's where you have to go on feel as a driver and, and know or think if you're there, go on and commit to that. But Matt kind of left it there. Jimmy thought, well, he's leaving that open for me, and just didn't work out. Worked all right, all right for the 20 car. Of course, Matt still trying to recover from that speeding on pit road penalty. Last pit stop that knocked him from third place to the end of the line. Oh, look at that. Kyle Busch, Juan Pablo Montoya, Jeff Gordon, Joey Logano, Kevin Harvick. And watching Montoya run a little different line, running that high line into the corner. Watch him turn this car down. Well, I'm not sure he's going to get it turned down that time. Yeah, he did. Got a little got too high, but got, gets a big oh. run off the corner. Great pass. Look at that. That's the way you do a slide job right there. This car is pretty good right now. Just watching that line. Montoya up to third. Carl Edwards in second in the 99. And trying to get the lead away from Paul Menard in the 27. Been a little while since we saw that 27 on pit road, Dave, but they're kind of doing what they have to do. They got penalized, Davey, so they came down on lap 204, took four tires. Slugger Labby just nodded when I asked him if they could make it on one more stop, so that may be their play from here. When I talked to him this afternoon, he said the car had been terrible in practice, so they made a lot of changes and were hopeful that they could get it into good race form. They put a spring rubber in on that last pit stop in the right rear, and that has really woken up the 27. For now, doing a good job, Dave, hanging on to that top spot over Carl Edwards. Yeah, he's doing a good job, but I, that, that's a risky strategy to try to make it on one more stop, having to maybe pit under green. Because if you do pit under green, you'll lose a couple of laps. The caution comes out. It's not like you can just take a wave around. So there's a little more risk to a great pass by Jeff. <laughs> yeah, it was. And they were the 22 into the 18 again. We've seen that action already happen, cost both of them earlier. Once again, lap traffic. Yep. Dictating a lot of what's happening here tonight. Kevin Harvick, after finishing well in the race last Sunday at Michigan, uh, asked in his post-race interview on our air about uh, feeling how his feeling was about his chances to win the championship. And DJ, you kind of didn't like the body language you saw uh, and the answer that you heard from Harvick about uh, where they stood. Well, he seemed less than enthusiastic after a good run. Uh, that, But it, the question was about their chances as they move forward towards the chase. And see, Edwards still not able to make that pass there. But just seemed like that Harvick wasn't that excited, didn't think their program was where they needed it to be uh, to try to be a part of the chase and, and be a factor in the chase. They're going to be there, but can they be a factor? Harvick right now settled in in seventh place. Carl Edwards looking, looking, looking on Paul Menard. But that tantalizing low lane, not carrying as much speed as the higher banking and the outside. So Menard hangs on to the top spot. 
Still 189 laps to go. Back to Bristol after this message and a word from our ABC station. Tem brought to you by Morongo Casino Resort and Spa. Good times. Welcome back to the Irwin Tools Night Race at Bristol. 181 laps to go. Fans, be sure to go to NASCAR.com for all of your latest NASCAR information. Paul Menard is still out front, but one of the storylines that we're following as we're hanging out here in the Quick and Loans ESPN Pit Studio is the driver that started 43rd. That would be Kyle Busch, who right now is under a little bit of pressure, but he's in fifth, albeit by pit strategy. Tell you what, Kyle Busch got beat up black and blue getting through the front of that field. Yeah, you're talking about some pit strategy, that's right. But he's sitting there running fifth right now, and he's doing a pretty good job. Want to quickly point out, there's been a lead change on the track. Carl Edwards was able to get around Paul Menard. Uh, another driver we're following, and this is sort of a story that we want to follow up on really the last two weeks in Countdown. It's, it's Jeff Gordon, who's currently in fourth. Uh, I'll be honest, I said I don't think he has it. I think he's looking a little down in the dumps lately, but tonight it's a completely different Jeff Gordon. <laughs> Did you say Jeff Gordon doesn't have it? I said he had it. <laughs> he had it. I mean, had it. But What's lose? the deal with you? Look at his record. And he started 32nd. He told us that. that he had a good car. He told us he made a mistake qualified. He said, if you get me in position, I can win this race. A little over 200 laps, or a little more than less than 200 laps to go. I think he's got a shot. I point out <laughs> you said Michigan, and that. I point out Watkins Glenn. That's what I said. We talked happened. about this, a do or die for Jeff Gordon this particular week, guys. He's fourth right now, and Brad, in my opinion, he's doing what he's got to do. He's done an outstanding job, but the thing we've seen, guys, is everyone who's taken advantage of any type of track position opportunities and put themselves up front. They're staying there. This is an odd race. There's not a lot of passing going on. Cars are kind of staying in the same positions. Jeff Gordon stayed up front. Menard stayed up front. Edwards up front. This is really interesting. No hard charging right now for some track reason. Track position is so important. You never think you'd say that at Bristol. You think you could use that fender and get yourself track position all night long. It's not happening. Wherever they're at, they're riding right there. Maybe. And Nicole Carl Edwards uh, had to work really hard to get that lead away from Paul Menard, and he had to do it quickly because Juan Pablo Montoya was charging. Talked about the different line Montoya started taking uh, just a little bit before that last uh, commercial break, and Montoya's used it to get the second and kind of put a little pressure on that 99's back bumper. Yeah, I've seen uh, some other cars actually trying the same line. Jeff Gordon seems to be incorporating a little bit of it. I, I bet some of these spotters on the roof have noticed that and how good Montoya is moving up and, and telling their drivers. And it looks like it's working for a couple more now. Yeah, Joey Logano is doing that. But then uh, but Montoya just getting, he's able to flat foot it when he gets back in. And he's going to race Carl Edwards for the lead here in just a minute, I believe. I don't think we're the only ones that have noticed that that 42 is flying. Three back to that 42. He's running in the same line as you. That just uh, yanks it down off the corner to get that run down the hill off. He just gets super loose off the corner doing that. Yeah, Jason, Les Jason Adleski on the roof, spotting for Carl Edwards, trying to provide a little tip. Yeah, you got to have a car that'll do it. I mean, it's not yeah. just one thing to be able to, to run the line, but if your car's not tight enough to drive it down off the hill, then it won't work. Edwards and Montoya, first and second, Doc. Yes, they are, and they told Carl Edwards to be very careful when you were trying to get around Paul Morardo a little bit ago. They have been very worried about the left side tires on the 99 car. They were completely gone on the first stop on lap 93. And even Carl said, I'm burning the left rear off this thing. They have warned him to be very, very careful. Yeah. The 42 of Juan Montoya, they've really been working on this car tonight, too, because he's been fighting tight. Wedge, track bar, air pressure adjustments. Crew Chief Chris Heroy has been wrenching on it, and they have gotten a good race car at this point. Heroy said, we're a lot better than we have been uh, last time here, and we look to prove it tonight, Alan. Caution out, contact on the track. Bobby Labonte in the 47 and David Gilliland in the 38. And uh, that left some debris on the racetrack in turn number four. Yeah, I think the 30 car might have been in a little part of that, too. Looked like they were going to have a big dust up. So yellow flag out with 166 laps to go. It's just outside of a probably a fuel window for some, maybe inside for others. 
26 cars on the lead lap. Mark Martin had just been on the pit lane under the green flag before the yellow came out. He had stayed on the track to take a wave around at the last caution, and you're not eligible to pit when you do that. Pit road open. Leaders, every one of them coming in. I haven't seen that much tonight, Vince. Well, what an interesting night it's been for Kyle Busch. Started at the back. He's been wrecked. He has a car that uh, he really liked early, but now he says it just needs to turn better. Track bar adjustment, air pressure adjustment, trying to get through the damage that they have and keep it up front. And uh, the 42 to one Pablo Montoya, his car's still tight. They uh, made an air pressure adjustment, four tires on Montoya, Doc. Carl Edwards, half a pound on the right rear, four tires. They got a packet full of fuel. They're not in a fuel window, but they may have to risk it. He's down on the way. Jeff Gordon, one and a half rounds, right rear, four tires. Then the car was awful last run. Dave. Paul Menard gives up uh, third place. He's going to take four tires, Sunoco fuel. He needed a small adjustment. The car was just a little bit tight. Uh, a couple strategy plays there, including Kevin Harvick and Matt Kenseth trying to regain some track position. Still cleaning up under the seventh caution of the Urban Tools night race at Bristol with still 162 laps to go and a lot more craziness to play out. Time for unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series with NASCAR Mobile 13 and unlimited talk, text, and data on the Sprint Network. Kevin Harvick, the latest to take the lead in this race. By getting just right side tires on this pit stop, get unlimited access to NASCAR with the NASCAR Mobile 13 app. Join the family with the unlimited MyWay plan, guaranteed for life and only from Sprint. See Sprint.com slash speed for details. Harvick, one of the nine drivers to lead this race, 14 different lead changes in the competition tonight. Harvick with right side tires on his pit stop. Matt Kenseth with right side tires on his pit stop. Juan Pablo Montoya. Came off the pit lane running fourth and has been tagged for speeding on pit road by NASCAR. Oh, that's heartbreaking for this team. They had such a good car. Four tires and away. Chris Heroy, the crew chief, saying, What? Got caught speed in there, section six. Oh, reading? Yeah, I don't know. We'll get it back. Keep safe, Well, it's a bad part of the race to get a speeding penalty. There's 27 cars on the lead lap, 160 to go. It's going to be hard to come back from that. Yeah, he has to start even behind more than that because there's still 36, 37 cars out there, and he has to start behind everybody. Sounds like he's uh, shutting it down to save a little fuel there, too. Yeah, that might be his only option here. So, Juan will drop to the back as the field gets the one to go signal. I hate that, I hate that for him, but I was good, excited about watching him try to win this race because I think that was gonna get pretty entertaining. Fourth to 26 from Montoya there. So right sides only for Kevin Harvick, 29, and Martin Truex Jr., 56, to start first and second. Then Carl Edwards, the man who just raced his way to the lead before the caution now will be on that inside row for the restart. Yeah, that changed things up with Montoya having that penalty, and it put Jeff Gordon in that, what I call the catbird seat, that fourth spot, gets him in the outside lane. He's got four tires, he's ready to go. Got Matt Kenseth in the 20 after the pit road speeding penalty earlier that knocked him to the back of the pack. A little strategy to try and recover some of that track position. Yeah, Clint Boyer taking two tires to get himself back up in the top 10 once again. Got up in that outside lane ahead of Gordon. Look at that 99 of Carl Edwards driving in the corner, though. He's going to be able to make it stick. No problem. Man, that's strong. Yeah, they've been working on this 99 and got him in good position. Jeff Gordon with another slide job. Oh, jumbled up around him, too. Whoa. cuts back to the inside. I don't think Truex appreciated that very much. Oh, to get Gordon back. 
I'll take your slide job and see you one myself. Come Paul Menard down the inside. Saw him lead a lot of laps just a minute ago. This sorts itself out from third place on back. Kyle Busch running in now ninth place. Oh, got a big bump from Ryan Newman there. How did he not crash that car? Wow. I don't know, yeah. You can see David Rudman up there in the 83. He's having 39. a great run tonight. Look at that. Yes. Wow. wow. You just don't save a car like that too many times. And so still, despite the difficulties of uh, the last 24 hours for this 18 car, Kyle's hanging in there in the top 10 and his bid to win the weekend outright here at uh, Bristol. Edwards, Harvick, one and two. Truex has very determinedly fought off Gordon for third place for now. Well, Edwards having a hard time Get by this 38. David Gilliland is in 28th place. Well, Harvick right into it. Got the slide job done there. And Gilliland, that 38, is two laps down. Time of the night when the laps run out and the patience does as well. Edwards leading. Still 146 to go at Bristol. Back live at Bristol and back under the caution. Trouble in turns three and four. David Rudiman, Eric Almarola, and Jimmy Johnson caught up in the aftermath. 15th, 16th, and 17th. Yeah, I've been watching Rudiman struggle a little bit. He'd been running really well all night inside the top 15, but we saw him get sideways early and off a of two, the 43. Looked like he was uh, all over the back of the 83. And I believe maybe the, they continued that contact down into turn three, and then Jimmy Johnson just at the wrong place at the wrong time once again tonight. Ryan Vickers. Vickers is a part of this involved. So my apologies to uh, Amarola. He wasn't involved in that. But this is what we're kind of starting to expect here late. And Jimmy Johnson comes in, nowhere to go. Roll wasn't involved in starting it, but he got a piece of it. And they obviously got the radiator on that 48. Yeah. Hmm. And see, Jimmy Johnson had kind of slowed and kind of was missing everything and then thought everything to kind of settled out. And then the 83 came back in front of him. Jamie. And Kevin Harvick still lacking grip, but the car is getting better. Four tires is the call for Kevin. They've only been making air pressure adjustments tonight. There goes the wrench. He's going to take a wedge adjustment to help that car a little bit more here. Second place car, one of few to pit under this caution. Yeah, that's kind of strange. He made that strategy play to get that track position and gave it all back. I think they've probably made their last pit stop now, though, and probably questioning can these others make it. I say if you're staying out right now, you're probably kind of saying that you are. Yeah, because right now for sure you could make it to the end. Dave? 
They have been working hard on this two car. He's going to take on two right side tires here. It was bad up on the top this time, better on the bottom of the track, but loose. So they're continuing to work. They pulled a Packer one time. They added it back again. They've just been working all over this two car. The nose is the problem for Brad. It's just been sliding the nose most of the night. He's been unable to steer that race car. That crew got paid by the pit stop now, didn't he? Yeah. Pretty well. I believe he was the pre-race pick of uh, several people. Yes. Not, Not working out very well tonight for the Blue Deuce or the 48. And Connecticut and Mexico in the third place game. And then at 3 p.m., Japan and California for the World Championship. The Little League World Series tomorrow starting at 11 a.m. on ESPN and watch ESPN. Then at 3 Eastern time here on ABC. And some entertaining baseball for sure. Sure has. Cleanup going on tonight. Gives us a chance to check in on our ESPN in-race reporter, Clint Boyer, running sixth. Nice recovery after getting wrecked while leading earlier. Clint Dale Jarrett with us. Thank you. Wow, what an entertaining night this has been uh, for us to watch. Uh, know you've got a good race car finally back in a position again to maybe challenge for a win. Man, I hope. If I can keep, uh, <laughs> keep people from running over me. Had a pretty good night going. Obviously just banged up our left front here. The car didn't turn quite as good in the center as it did, but um, still pretty good on a long run. We just need a long run here, get back up there. Um, Brian's got good strategy here. I think we can make it to the end, so just have to see what happens. Keep digging. Clint, are you able to make that bottom work to make the passes to get you to the front here? Well, like I said, it's just not turning quite as good as it did in the center. Um, I'm struggling a little bit running the bottom. Uh, just uh, got to got to still got to go whether or not. Got to be able to make some passes here, do a job. But I think our strong point still the long run. Need to get there and, and then uh, you know make a race out of it. Okay, thanks for talking. Good luck, man. Yep. So Clint Boyer has uh, made a nice recovery tonight after getting spun out while leading this race. That happening back at lap 176. Meanwhile, for Jimmy Johnson. The tough luck run continues. Really been a stretch of about three months dating back to Memorial Day where races have been filled with a series of problems for Jimmy, but in particular, the uh, last few weeks have been trouble filled. Last week at Michigan, the trip behind the wall and out of the race, and then tonight, slam bang here at Bristol. And a lot of work going on behind the wall right now, Jamie. Yes, he's right behind his pit box. The saws came out, cut off the front end of this car. The main thing is the radiator. They already put the new one on. They're installing that now. The 88 Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s team over here helping. The good news for this team, the 48, they're already locked into the chase. That doesn't affect that outcome, but they want to get him back out, save some points. Last weekend, Alan, was his first DNF of the year. That doesn't even, Jamie, bring into account the races like Indianapolis, where he had that hiccup on the last pit stop and lost the chance to win the Brickyard 400. And here we go, 133 to go. Carl Edwards, 99, the race leader. Nice move by David Rudum in 83 to get out of the way and let that pack steam by. See Matt Kenseth there battling for the second spot again. Restarted 27th. After getting a pit road speeding penalty back on lap 266 and worked his way back here. A little pit strategy in a fast race car. Gordon. 24, Boyer 15, Earnhardt Jr. 88, third, excuse me, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Boy, Gordon really had to battle right there because Boyer had that outside position after restarting sixth there, and it looked like that Gordon was going to lose a spot, but battled hard to get up there in the fourth spot. What a night for Jeff Gordon. Started back in 32nd place. A lot of these teams that we talked about heard Boyer say he thought that he had enough fuel to get to the end. A lot of these others that didn't take that opportunity to pit there are counting on probably some more caution laps 
before this is over. And as I watched a lot of this going on around the track, I think they're probably right. Uh, Neon 27 right there. Paul Menard was the first off the pit lane on that stop. He restarted in 15th place. Logano 22, Keselowski 2 also pitted. Harvick, Jeff Burton, David Reagan, Juan Pablo Montoya all were on the pit lane under that last yellow. Matt Kenseth gets by Carl Edwards. Trouble in turn two. Jeff Burton spins. Caution down, man. Fired up, go. That was Kenseth ahead. Remember what? Dig hard, dig hard, dig hard, dig hard. There you go. Dig hard right there. All clear. Go, 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 go. Caution is out. You'll be good. This all started with Montoya. He ducked to the inside of, I think it was a 30 car of Stremmy. Kind of clipped him a little bit. You can see they're extremely not happy about it. Hey. Streamy got up into the left rear of the 31. You can see right here. And we're just getting to that time of the race, and Montoya is upset. He had a pit road speeding penalty uh, with a car that looked like he was going to be capable of giving him an opportunity to win. Trying to make things happen. Jeff Burton in 21st place at the time of his turnaround. So, caution number nine is out here in Bristol. Clunk, clunk, and spin. Back after this message and a word from your ABC station. Back at Bristol Motor Speedway, getting set to restart here in the Irwin Tools night race and problems for the dominant car tonight. Carl Edwards' car has been stu stumbling the last few laps under yellow. They have gone to a backup ignition. They say it may be more than this ignition. He's going to stay low out of the way. If it stumbles again on the restart, it could be injured. There it is. Edwards in trouble. Three wide. Now back to two wide. Matt Kenseth leads. Jeff Gordon gets clear of Truex for second. Edwards seems like he's back up to speed, but he's back to 10th place. I don't think Edwards' car is completely healed. It might be a valve sprint, guys. Yeah. It's let go. What do you want me to do? You want me to keep running or just shut her down? High RPM, you can see it losing a lot of speed. Shoot. That's exactly what a broken valve spring looks like. Man, it's up to you. We're going to still blow the hell of this thing up. So He's running it. Update from Doc. Paul Edwards has just said, he said, guys, it's either going to be a valve spring or maybe a valve. What do I do? What do I do? The engine tuner just yelled up to the crew chief, telling him to keep going. Just keep going. We'll find out what it is, but don't come in. Just what we do now, but keep going. That's what they told him. The Carl is getting slower and slower. Led 119 laps tonight. Next highest total, 64. Yeah, that thing probably started as a valve spring and, and then maybe dropped the valve there. And it's going to get worse. Totally down a cylinder. Now you can see it just keeps getting slower. Get off of turn four. Yeah, what happens, these parts just start going places they're not supposed to be. And uh, it just starts a fatal chain of events in the engine. You can see him slowing down, coming down uh, to his pit on the front straightaway. Oh. Here left, turn left. So Carl Edwards behind the wall might be the first Roush Fenway racing car to not finish a race this season. I smell it. That's a test.
testament to the, especially on the engine side of it, but yeah. obviously uh, everything else. But Doug Yates doing a terrific job in building those Ford engines. Great horsepower and reliability. Speaking of Ford engines, there's see the 22 of Legato trying to move back forward. Doing everything he can to get him in a position for one of those wild card spots. Legato and Paul Menard racing for 12th and 13th places. Logano's car carrying those big tape band-aids on the fender after he and uh, Kyle Busch were involved in a little skirmish earlier in the race. Joey said, we can't afford to have any more bad days. They had potential to have one and still got a lot of laps to go. But so far, nice recovery for last week's winner. Check with Doc. And a bad night for Paul Edwards. They are done. The engine is gone in the 99 car. They are done for the night. Ouch. It's not a track you would expect to have an engine problem because the RPM range you know, is up and down, obviously, because they're out of gas a lot. But uh, just a bad break for Carl. Yeah, especially thinking of the situation that they took gear away from them this race, which was turning less RPMs than what we had here in the spring. You spend on like 30% of the time around here at full throttle, so the engine really doesn't get taxed too much. Kyle Busch 18, Casey Kane 5, racing for 6th and 7th place. 18 started 43rd in this race. And it's been that like you're surprised he's up there, Al. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no. Though after seeing him get uh, knocked around a little bit earlier in the race. Yeah, I would not have been surprised if he'd had no issues throughout the night. This wouldn't have surprised me at all. But knowing this car is not driving well after getting hit into the wall, uh, the toe in, I would think, is probably knocked out a little bit. But you know, a great strategy and just uh, Kyle Busch kind of willing this thing to stay up uh, inside the top 10. Yeah, Vince reported earlier the steering wheel a little bit out of a line on that uh, 18 car. It's not the steering wheel that's out of a line on the 99 car, Doc. No, it is not. And Carl Edwards has stepped out of the car. Carl, we heard it was engine. How much warning did you have? I didn't have any warning. Um, I just got to thank all the guys. You know, that's, that's the most fun I've had in a race car in a long time. Jimmy did a great job. Everybody's been basketball. The car was almost perfect. The engine ran awesome. It was broke. They're great pit stops. And I think we got some good things to look forward to. This is what we needed. We needed to have a race like this. I mean, the engine aside, Carl Edwards out of it, and by the way, they're telling me now, guys, you're right. It was a valve spring, and now maybe a valve that put him out. So the driver who's led the most laps tonight is done. The driver leading right now is recovering from a pit road speeding penalty that cost him his track position. Matt Kenseth out in front, just under 100 to go. The Urban Tools Night Race at Bristol inside its final 100 laps. And the race lead held by Matt Kenseth, perfectly illustrating a story of ups and downs throughout the night that uh, would apply to many, many drivers when the final story of this race is written. Kenseth took the green flag for this race in fifth position, got up front, contended for the lead, got a pit road speeding penalty that knocked him way back in traffic. His crew used a little strategy to regain a little bit of that track position. Now he's out in front of this race in the closing laps. Dale Jr. 88, Mark Truex Jr. 56, racing for a spot. That's third place. Yeah, I've been watching Jr. kind of chop this uh, margin down that he was behind Martin Truex Jr. there for a while, and uh, he was about 10 car lengths back, but just kind of methodically worked his way up there. Andy pointed out earlier, one of the better tracks for Dale Jr. and his team, and in really big need of a, a um, good, solid night. A must-have night. Eventful nights, Clint Boyer, 15, leading this race earlier when he got tagged by a lap car and spun at lap 176. Has made his way all the way back up to sixth place.
beaten and battered cars. Kyle Busch, the 18. Got three of those four that we're looking at there have yeah. all been into the wall tonight. Uh, starting with Kyle Busch there, Brian Vickers and Joey Logano all been in some type of accidents. It's hard to find a car out there that doesn't have some damage on the right side. And all of those are running in the top ten. Here's a challenge for fourth. Casey Kane in the five. Rex looks like he might have maybe run the right front tire off of this thing. Really struggling this car right now. Just took two tires on that last pit stop that he made. Dave? And the 56 is saving fuel. He told him to start saving fuel really as an option. But now it looks like that may be the play for, Ru for Martin Truex Jr. Again, lap 336 was his last stop. Right side tires only. They needed about a gallon and a half. Save. Vince? Well, the 15 is short on fuel as well. As noted, he took right sides on that last stop. And Brian Patty, the crew chief on the 15, have encouraged him. Save, save, save. Second and points coming into this. They could clinch a spot in the chase here tonight. And Patty said, oh, how nice it would be to go to Atlanta and Richmond not having bite to bite their nails, wondering if they're going to get in. They're holding on so far, Alan. Yeah, that's been the whole program for Brian Patty and Flint Boyer and this team. Consistently run up front get locked in and then go for it and Boyer there around his teammate to pick up the fifth position Matt Kenseth Jeff Gordon one and two 77 laps to go here in Bristol how's it going to turn out can you believe it's less than 70 degrees in August in Bristol Tennessee in the final laps of the Irwin Tools night race at Bristol a beautiful, beautiful night for these fans to watch the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series highlight race of the month of August for sure. I'm not sure what's dragging right there on, on top of the right right three. Three. It's like you have a piece of the bottom of the bumper. Remember the earlier incident with uh, David Stremme getting hit by Montoya up into Jeff Burton? Oh, oh. yeah. Boy, that could have been deep. Well, now we know why it's dragging. So out. Here. Hold on to it. I'm not happy with you. Yeah, it's hard to dial them up on your cell phone right now. Yeah. Send the message another way. Bet that's not the last time we see that kind of thing tonight, too. Well. Montoya with a pit road speeding penalty earlier, knocked way back in traffic, trying to make a recovery. He's up to 12th position. Caution. Yeah, that piece came off. Oh, three and four here. As we check our nationwide insurance danger zone, add one to that, make it 10 cautions. Big, huge piece of debris. A couple of them actually right there by the start finish line. Like the inner fender panel. Yellow flag number 10. All right, crew chiefs, what do you do? Been talking about stretching fuel, talking about track position, tires, so on. You're these lead guys. Steve Letard, has got Junior in fourth. Chad Johnson's got uh, Truex in sixth. What do you do? Well, you've played this gamble. Got to leave him out? Well, yeah. I mean, you're going to get a little insurance by these caution laps. If you know you can't make it, I mean, you just have to pit. But I don't think the 88 can afford to gamble here. Yeah, that, there's the other side of that, because he, if he runs out and gets a 25th or worse finish, that's the last thing he needs. Talking about his spot uh, close to the bubble in the race to the chase with just these three races to go. Pit road open. Casey Kane in the five. Going to give up third place. Junior stayed out. Yeah. Truex is in. Newman's in. Hamlin, Ambrose, Harvick, and more. Jamie? Brian Vickers decided to come down pit road. Tight off is his complaint. Right side tires here, and they'll fill him up with fuel. He's worked his way back into the top 10 after having a car that wasn't handling to his liking. Guys, Casey Kane in on the five car. They could not make it on fuel. He was trying to save fuel, so right side tires. Kenny Francis says, well, let's fill it up, and that way we will know. Dave. 
We'll never know whether they could have made it in the 56, but they said the best move for us right now in a wild card position for the chase is to take on four tires right now and do what they're doing. Philip Pulis, no go fuel. Denny Hamlin's car was tight in the center. He comes down pit road as well. Takes, it looks like, just left. Got to let the field that's on the track pass by, then file in line. Be an interesting restart in a minute. Getting down to the final laps of the Urban Tools Night Race at Bristol. As we get the 50 to go mark approaching quickly, uh, split pit strategy again. As you look at the top five in the race in the last lap that they pitted, And this uh, caution flag certainly bringing a variety of interesting radio conversations about that uh, age-old racing question, to pit or not to pit. What do you think? <laughs> nice try. It's your call there, peanut butter. I'm good either way. Yeah, we better stay out, man. If we pit, we'll never get back up there. All right, what we have here is 20 cars lead lap. We can pit, be conservative, and finish, get a hat, or we can Stay out, stay fuel, and try to win. Get a hat, Brian yeah. Patty's reference is, when you clinch your place in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup, they give you these commemorative hats to say you're in. But she's basically in anyway. It would just make him clinch tonight. <laughs> I think he wants to be in tonight. Yeah. Jeff Gordon running second, Doc. And they told him he's right on the number in terms of fuel. In fact, they said you may be a half a lap short. Jeff said the car is good early on, but gets tight in traffic. Jamie. Steve Letard told his driver, Dale Jr., to stay out. We won't be able to make up those positions. Said safe, safe, safe. Now we just said they're good to go. Alan? 54 laps to go. How is it going to turn out? 21 cars on the lead lap. Green flag. Clint Boyer trying to keep Jeff Gordon pitched to the bottom to see if he can get the second. Trouble, trouble, big trouble. Newman, Kozlowski, Hamlin, Harvick, Truex, and Schrader. Truex, big loser here. He, was, he had raced his way into the top 10 in points where he was running earlier. Maybe hurt. Well, it was a hard hit there. Harvick had just made another pit stop also under that last caution. You just got to that point in the race where everybody's going for every inch. We knew that there was time that things were going to start ramping up, and you throw a caution in the mix with 60 to go. Martin Truex Jr. trying to unhook from all the safety paraphernalia after the big hit he just took. He wants out. this started look like the 11 car back back up look like the 11 and the 29 got together I think Kevin Harvick may have gotten in the right rear of Denny Hamlin getting into the corner
you know, things happen so quickly that it's hard to tell until you see a replay unless it's just you know, definitive there that drivers question uh, exactly what may have happened. Well, Jamie? Kevin, we saw you frustrated there. What happened? What led to that? I just saw the sh 11 shoot up, um, you know, trying to look like trying to get back uh, at somebody and just caused a wreck, but um, said the 56 got into him there. So I just wanted to know what happened. All good. Just hate it for my Jimmy John's guys. And, um, you know, track position is such a, such a big deal. Wish we, wish we had the old Bristol back. Uh, it's a lot more fun to race on. All right. Kevin Harvick's night is done, and I see Denny Hamlin still sitting in his car, Alan. All right. Let's go back and play detective. <laughs> Racing detective. What happened? Really hard to tell. I mean, it looked like this 11 was slow getting in the corner. Looked like he tried to get up there. I thought maybe the 55 got a little bit loose getting there, and Jimmy was trying to maybe avoid that somehow. Okay. 11 and 55 there. Yeah. Tire down on the 11 right front, maybe after that contact. Definitely a stack up. Oh man, there's a lot of good cars got torn up here. That's a hard lick for Mark Truett. Yeah, so that one right there, it's, uh, I, I think the 11 Outside. had a tire down after that contact with Vickers. Yeah, it sure looked like that. Hold the brake, hold the brake, hold the brake. Hold it. Let it roll if you want. This won't be fun. Clear, clear, clear the nine. Keep rolling here. You're coming inside, inside. Key moment right there. Yeah, I believe that tire did get cut down. Because he just doesn't turn left in the course. See how that tire is kind of? Yeah, yeah and you can see how he's really trying to slow down. Yeah. But as he's turning then, he gets into the back of the 39 a little bit, and then Harvick has nowhere to go, as does the 56. See Brad Keselowski, a lot of damage there. All right, that was the part of it that happened on the track. The excitement didn't stop there. Harvick apparently parked his car in Hamlin's pit stall, and Hamlin helped push it away. Dave? Looks like the red's been lifted because they're going to work on the car now, Alan, yep. I believe. Yep. So, uh, Denny concurs with you, the contact that he had with Brian Vickers. He said, definitely cut down my right front, and then it was on from there. They did uh, instruct their driver when he came down pit road uh, to get the 29 out of the pit stall, and that's just what he did. Yeah, I'm not sure Harvey <laughs> figured out what was going on. I think he was just mad parked in their pit stall, and uh, yep. he, fi he figured it out later. Fans leave Bristol. <laughs> smiling and talking about things they've seen. Most drivers leave Bristol mad. All but one, usually. Yep. Well, that one took out uh, a bunch of cars, or damaged a lot of cars. Seven of them got a piece of it. And of course, for Truex, 12th in points. Yeah. Got that one win, but trying to stay ahead of people like Joey Logano and so forth to stay in that wild card position and only those three races to go in the chase. And yeah, but he's got a win. Yeah, this two car does not have a win and has a lot of damage here. Going behind the wall to fix this. Eighth in points starting the night. I think he's got a broken up control arm or something on the right front suspension. The dumpsters will be full at the end of the night. See that in an auction somewhere sometime here. Yeah. Casey Mears also behind the wall in the 13. So big mayhem, big trouble. After a restart with 54 to go, they stacked them up seven deep in turn three. We briefly were under the red flag. Jamie? 
long discussion to pit or not to pit. Steve Letarte said if we pit, we'll restart 12th. He goes, we can't beat the 20. We've got to pit. Junior likes that call. He doesn't want to run out of gas. Remember, they're trying to make their way into the chase. They got to be a little conservative. That's why they pitted. Yeah, what changed this whole decision is all the cars that got knocked out in that last crash. And now it was a no different decision for Steve Letarte. I think he made the right call here. Fewer cars yes. to fall back in line behind. How will it shake up the standings? Well, the race isn't over yet, but Truex stands to fall out of that wild card spot. Keslowski's going to fall down on the bubble, and we've still got some racing to go here in Bristol. Back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Just gone green, 47 to go. Matt Kenseth holds on. Clint Boyer left to race for second with Juan Pablo Montoya. That was Stenhouse up and out of the groove in three and four in the 17. How about our first and second cars right now had speeding penalties on pit road and come back to battle for the win. Well, Jeff Gordon got really high off the four there. Gordon was running oh. second a little while ago. Had some contact with Ambrose also. Now he's getting knocked around. Not done with the yellow flag. Three wide off the corner there with Logano. Yeah. I know that's a bold statement in Bristol, right? We're not done <laughs> yeah, with the exactly. yellow flag. <laughs> Kyle Bush, Kyle out of Bush. Shape. yeah. Marcus Ambrose in the nine. Up to fifth place. Tremendous run for the nine car tonight, and here comes Casey Kane in the third. With much fresher tires than the, the drivers in front of him, too. And plenty of fuel. Not sure about Matt Kenseth. He's the one that's a big question mark up front. That 42 car has a little more fuel than he does, but we know Casey Kane has plenty. On the race leader, Vince Welch. Well, the yellows have definitely helped Matt Kenseth. In fact, just before they went back green, Jason Ratcliffe, the, the crew chief, told Kenseth, we're one to the good. Now, the one issue they are concerned about is that right front tire. This is the longest green flag or the longest run they've had. And Jason warned Matt, be careful with that right front. Now, that's something that was a problem in the last couple of races here that we really haven't seen tonight, but the cautions have been fairly regularly spaced. We really haven't had a terribly long consecutive yeah. green flag run. Yeah, he's going to have to run 164 laps on that right front. I know there's caution laps in there, but this will be a long run on that on those right side tires. 69 laps, the longest we've gone consecutively under the green tonight. Brian Vickers, 55. Marcus Ambrose, 9, racing for fifth place. Montoya, second, Ambrose, fifth. We think about them on the road courses, but they always seem to run well here at Bristol. What's in common? How you go after it. Yeah, you got to attack. They, uh, this, uh, see them attacking right now. Yeah, I think Montoya is going to be there. Joey Logano, nice recovery in the 22, trying to race into the chase. Well, it's going to be a huge night for Logano. He's been through a lot of adversity. They've made a lot of pit stops, yep. putting back in the field quite a few times. Set up there in seventh place right now, Dave. He is, DJ. And under that last caution, before the big wreck, he came down pit road late. He had a piece of paper debris on the front grill, and it was running hot. He thought he could scrub it off and stay out, but he couldn't get it done. So after everyone else pitted, he was the last to pit. Now he's good to go. Yeah, I saw that, Dave. I really didn't know until you explained there what that was for, why he did, because it looked like they were set up to be in a pretty good position from a pit stop they had made just before that. That's fourth, fifth, and sixth. While up front, Casey Kane closes on Juan Pablo Montoya for second, who closes on Matt Kenseth for the race lead. Casey Kane is driving hard right now. He yes, knows he it's is. important to get by Montoya as quickly as he possibly can if he's going to try to get a run at Kenseth. Well, a little 
bobble there, but Montoya hangs on to second. Kenseth hangs on to the lead. 31 laps to go. Hang on for the finish of the night race at Bristol. Twenty-one laps to go. The Irwin Tools night race at Bristol, led by Matt Kenseth. Now Casey Kane behind him in second place. Kane has gotten around Juan Pablo Montoya. A little while ago, big seven-car accident up in turn four. Following up on that with Doc Punch. Hey, frustrated Martin Truex comes out of the hospital. Martin, first of all, we saw you sitting in the car, shaking your head. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Just uh, disappointed. From your vantage point, what did you see happen? I, honestly, I didn't see anything. They just started jamming up, and, and I just tried to, follow, they tried to follow the 29 through, and it just closed up, and, and we got smashed in the fence and hit a couple times. So just frustrating. You know, we, we had a great car all night long. We ran up towards the front all night and um, just didn't have enough gas to make it to the end there. We had to pit. And, you know, once you get in the back here towards the end, they start, they start wrecking, and uh, you're an innocent victim. So just frustrated right now because I uh, had a good car, and we didn't deserve that tonight. Martin Truex trying to be patient, but it didn't work out. Other follow-up stock, Brad Kozlowski and Casey Mears have come back onto the racetrack. Denny Hamlin rejoined the race, but has just slowed and gone back to the pit lane. Casey Kane is charging and is closing on Matt Kenseth for the race lead. Yeah, the big question a while ago was, did the 20 have enough gas? I'm not sure he's got enough speed to hold off this five car. Yeah, those pressure tires are really showing up. Matt Kenseth has been out a long time on these tires. Kenseth last pitted at 3.36. Kane last pitted at 4.41. This is for fifth place. Vickers 55, Ambrose 9. Vickers been involved in about three incidents tonight, but uh, drove himself back up into the top five once again. Seems to do that on a regular basis, especially here. Kenseth in traffic. Joey Logano now trying to get a spot from Marcus Ambrose. Race leader in traffic. Kane with a big run. That's it. Not yet. Wow. Thought Kane had enough speed right there that he could just get off the corner. But he just bobbled enough and Kansas came flying back. And still, does Kenseth really have enough fuel to get to the finish? How will the lap traffic play out? It's going to be interesting. Well, that's a nice move by Kenseth right there. Kane, Kane with a big run. Can he finish the slide yeah. jump? Oh, boy. I mean, he might finish with a run. Right here, but him to go inside. Remember, it was this race a year ago when Kenseth and Tony Stewart tangled racing for the lead and crashed off turn four. The one that resulted in the helmet toss. Remember that Casey Kane has been frustrated with Joe Gibbs Racing's drivers, <laughs> saying he got taken out of four races this year. That's a Joe Gibbs Racing car. He's trying to pass for the win. I think it was Kenseth that got him the last time at Watkins Glen. Yeah, how short a memory he's got, or long a memory he's got. Hasn't been that long ago. I think Casey Kane will try for another lap or two here to make the pass, but uh, I would love for him to use the bumper then. Hey, we're down to it. It's seven to go when they get back. Finishing second to Matt a couple of times in addition to the bumps, bangs, and spins. Check the tape on the photo finish camera. <laughs> Might be needing it tonight at Bristol. Casey Kane, five, stalking Matt Kenseth, 20. There'll be five laps to go next time they cross the finish line. There are lap cars ahead. Five more, still right with you. I think a lot of people never questioned the talent of Casey Kane. Some question, does he have the toughness in a situation like this to get the job done, move that driver out of the way? Going to make a run. Slip. Oh, not quite. 
He's trying to do it the way that every driver would like to make it happen. Running out of time, though. Three laps to go. Kane, the winner here in the March race earlier this year. Kenseth, the four-time winner this year. One more mile around Bristol. Might have just given up his chance there. He, he might get one more shot at his bumper here. You're going to gonna take contact to make this pass. You're not just going to pass Kenseth. They come to the white flag. The last lap at Bristol. Kenseth and Kane, who wins it? He's there. Can he get to him? Not Final to him. corner. Here's the bump. No, he missed it. Matt Kenseth is going to hang on and win the night race at Bristol. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're all awesome. Thank you. Good job, Peter Butter. Good job, boys. Best team in the business. We got our mojo back. Time to get serious. Great job, guys. Sorry about my mess up tonight. Glad it didn't cost us. You guys are awesome. Boy, what a finish. Matt Kenseth drove a flawless last two laps. They had enough fuel. Clint Boyer didn't. Boyer coasting to the finish line just now, while Kenseth has the power to come over and do the burnouts. Kenseth started this season hot, though they had a couple of bumps. Remember Daytona and so on. He had some races where he led a lot of laps and didn't win, but he scored four wins, then hit a little bit of a dry spell. He and his team wanted to get their swagger reestablished as they go into the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. With his win tonight, Matt Kenseth clinches his place in the chase, at least a wild card spot for Matt. And Matt is our Goodyear superior performer on the night. Here at Bristol, he had to work hard to earn that trophy. Oh, that's that was again. a hard 500 laps there tonight. And... Kenseth, the winner. Yes, the lane up on top of the building here at Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll talk with Matt, some of the other top finishers, when we come back. Confetti flying, fireworks exploding overhead, and a lot of wrinkled race cars, as always, after the night race at Bristol. One tonight by Matt Kenseth, who overcame a pit road speeding penalty earlier in the race that uh, knocked him way back to the back of the pack, but made it up, his team playing a little strategy to help out, and then he stayed on the racetrack for the final 140, 164 laps. The fuel lasted, and he held off Casey Kane in a ferocious fight to the win. Down to here from the race winner. We talked about how close they were on fuel. He didn't make it to victory lane. They had to push his car into victory lane. What a victory, Matt. You won the Bristol night race. Congratulations. How about that battle with Casey Kane? How good was it for you? Yeah, I mean, I think Casey's getting tired of battling me. Uh, Casey's just an uh, unbelievable talent. We finished first, second a few times this year, and I know he uh, he wanted it bad, man. We raced as hard as we could race. Um, used every inch of racetrack and uh, had just enough to hold on it, just enough fuel and just enough tires. So really, I think uh, Dollar General and this whole team, uh, Rick Greiling's actually had the win today, and he's never been to one. So um, just so proud of this group behind me. I messed up, sped up here road. We are able to overcome that. and. Uh, have a shot at this win. So, man, we won the Bristol night race. It's pretty awesome. You won four times earlier in the year. A little bit of struggle of late. What's this win do for this team's confidence as you approach the chase? I hope we're back. You know, I felt like that. We led a lot of laps earlier this year, last month and a half. 
um, not so great. So uh, real quick, I got to thank Dollar General, Sprint, Home Depot, Husky Tools, Toyota Gatorade, Citizen Watch, GameStop, and Reese's. All our partners that uh, put this together and gave me a chance to drive this awesome machine. It's been a blast. Matt Kenseth has won the Bristol Night Race. Doc. Casey Kane, what a fabulous effort those final, final few laps. Now, we, we documented a few weeks ago your frustration with some of the Joe Gibbs cars, yet you seem to race, Matt, cleanly those final laps. Did you have other options on the final lap? I mean, you always have other options. I just uh, I had a really good Farmers Insurance Chevrolet. Uh, we, were, we were fast. Kenny made the, the, a great call to get the tires come out and not have to worry about fuel. And, uh, I just didn't get it done. I didn't win. I had the uh, the better car. The guys did an awesome job in the pits, and I feel bad I didn't win. I needed. Uh, we needed this. This would have been big for us. But we ended up second. Still a good points day, and uh, we'll try to get one in Atlanta. You tried to make the pass cleanly. Our guys upstairs, Dale Jarrett and Andy, were talking about on the final lap. Your only option would have been actually to have contact with the 20. Uh, were you trying to get there, or did you just opt not to do it? Well, if I was trying to get there, I would have wrecked probably both of us. It would have just been a wreck. Uh, I just tried to pass him as clean as I could, erase him as hard as I could, and I thought I had him at one point. I had a good run, tried to slide across, and he just kept position. We were rubbing all the way down off turn four. Uh, I just didn't clear him. I just didn't get it done, and uh, I'm upset with myself for, for not figuring out how to win tonight because I, I clearly had a better car at the end of the rest. A very frustrated Casey Kane, but uh, he raced him cleanly in spite of the frustrations and now in his fourth second place finish of the year. What do you think? Well, I mean, yeah, he tried. Uh, no, you there's can't Katie. Yeah. Uh, there, but, uh, Casey Kane will look worried. back on this and think that they uh, could have hit him. <laughs> Matt Kenseth celebrating a win and a big win in the night race at Bristol, and we have more post-race coverage coming up. Fans starting to file out after another wild win at Bristol. 11 cautions, 74 laps, and a greatly scrambled championship picture now as we go to the final three races to, to decide who will be in the uh, chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. Well, final two before the chase starts. Atlanta, then Richmond. Should be very interesting to see how this all works out in these next couple of weeks. No doubt about that. Don't want to miss it. I'll tell you, this thing is heating up big time. More stories to wrap up post-race in Bristol. We start with Dave. So Denny Hamlin comes home a disappointing 28th after being the fastest qualifier today. Talk about that restart and then uh, the conversation you might have with Kevin Harvick. Yeah, I, I, he was under the pressure and I caused it, but I didn't. Um, you know, he, he didn't see the replay, and I, I talked to him. Luckily, I, we, we were able to talk right away and, and, and hash it out. So um, the 55 just cut down on us right in the middle of the straightaway, and it cut my right front tire. And uh, obviously, I'm, I'm just in the car and a steering wheel holder at that point. So went dead straight and caused a huge accident. So sucks for all the cars that are involved, especially guys that are kind of on that bubble. But I didn't cause it. I'm just uh, one of those guys that was just running down the straightaway, and we got cut off. One of your crew said to me, it's been that kind of year. You concur? I just, you know, we just can't catch a break. Even, you know, we were as solid of a car as we were today. You know, we had a, a car that could run in the top five. And, you know, I, I thought contend, I, I thought we were better than the five. Uh, so, you know, who knows what would happen. We just, we cannot catch a break. Uh, you know, you got to laugh at it at this point because it's just, it's uh, somewhat humorous. Denny Hamlin's night at Bristol. Well, what a night it was for Jimmy Johns. We just tracked you down. You still had a smile on your face, but what a rough couple of weeks it's been. After all that, how are you looking toward the chase as you see Matt Kenseth at victory lane? Yeah, you know, been, been a bad few weeks, but uh, it's racing, and we're going to definitely um, come back next week and do all we can. I mean, I think we're going to run decent tonight and have a decent finish. Last week, I really think we had a shot to win and had an engine failure, uh, but it's racing. Stuff happens. Um, luckily, we had a big points lead that we can kind of deal with right now, and we've locked into the chase, but we certainly want to clean things up and have some great finishes rolling into the chase. But, uh, you know, this low team will work hard, and we'll keep, uh, keep after it and be back next week. I guess you have two more tries to be the number one chase or uh, the seed with Matt Kenseth at this point. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll go to Atlanta and, and do all we can there. And then Richmond, we just tested there, and I felt like we had a real good test. So uh, there's still a lot of racing left. And then once that chase starts, it's its own animal. So uh, we'll just wait and see what happens during those 10. All right, thanks, Jimmy. And those championship standings after tonight's race. Clint Boyer locks his place in the chase. Matt Kenseth clinches at least a wild card. Joey Logano into the top 10. Out of the top 10, Brad Keselowski, Kurt Busch, Jeff Gordon down in 13th. 
there's the picture. And yeah, we head to another, Atlanta next weekend. Another wild night at Bristol. Saturday night, nationwide series from Atlanta. Sunday night, the Sprint Cup Series race from Atlanta. And your late local news is next, except on the West Coast. Wisconsin's Matt Kenseth wins tonight in Bristol.